the coast that is extremely late to the stream. I'm so sorry about that. OBS decided that um, my drivers weren't updated, and I just realized that the screen is out of place. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let me, let me recenter this. Oh, I have, I have to change. Uh, have to do, um, I have to change screens anyway, so uh, let's do that. Boy, today started badly, huh? I don't even know why you told me that thing about the drivers, because I updated them like two days ago. So, um, great, thanks. Super cool. Anyway, uh, what were we doing? Right, the game. Let's continue. Right, chapter four we were finishing. Alright, I had to, um, I had to take them uh, back to the, the dorms, right? Anyway, ladies. After closing up the special building, we leave the school. Mr. Yashiki? Yeah? Do you mind sharing more details about this case with us? W which one? The, the one about the girl in the pool? Because sure. About my, um... My weird, uh, ghost bride situation? Uh, no, actually, because I don't trust him. Maybe I can help you come out with something? No. No. Well, you have a point, but... You don't want us to get involved. It's too late for that. We've already been targeted with the departed. Yeah, and you survived. Which is very sus. It's extremely sus, girls. I don't know how to tell you this. This in this case is the only way we're going to get our normal lives back. That's why we both, uh, why both of us want to help you out. Please help, help, Mr. Yashiki. No. Fine, alright. All the deaths, grotesque cold phenomena, the fear of being targeted by the departed, me missing my beloved Bradman Mashita. Where is he? Where's my boyfriend? I miss him. Sometimes I still hear his voice. My heart is overwhelming with all this stress. I want to let it all. I want to let it out all. I love you, I can't, I can't speak. God, today is a bad day, huh? I just want to vent to someone, anyone. Yeah, and that's why we wait for Mashita, our boyfriend. So, once he's to press me, I give in easily. Open it up like an unlocked diary, spilling the details of the incidents up to this point. Yashiki, Yashiki. 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 Hey, uh, hey, Ashiki. Hey, Ashiki. Hey, Ashiki. But, bitch. Awful, awful decision. Oh, for a question, now we were killed by spirits, diamonds, hospitalization, as well as the female doll and numerous visions shown, she's shown me. Something I don't even tell the mark bearers. You know, Yashiki. You know, I'm thinking about it. Why would Yashiki just talk to these two bitches? No offense, ladies. Um, consistently the way he does. And I'm starting to think that if they're related to the departed, which by all means is the most likely possibility, maybe the thing here, may maybe the thing here, is that, you know, Ghost, like we saw it in the Red Riding Hood case at the end of the Mark 1, Ghost kind of affect people, like Hero got all horny and weird about it. And Yashiki is not immune to getting possessed. So like maybe some kind of mild spirit possession bullshit like he's doing it because they're the departed. Well, one of them is anyway. You know? I guess that's just about everything. My honest reaction to that? All of them stare at me, stunned. I must find it hard to believe. Honestly, I'd be more of a it'd be more of a shock if they believed it all. Uh Mr. Yashiki? 
A doll in, dread, in a dread dress. We know her. Say what? Yeah, my own reaction to that. We saw her before at the clock tower. The day we received this curse. Uh, what curse? I'm not following you. Yeah, same. Uh, come on, girls. Please. If you're gonna press me for, for information, at least give me information back, you know? For, for, uh, for exchange and whatever. Alright, turn up events. I have to ask for details. Uh, the door sighting. It was two months ago during summer break. We went to the clock tower for the school 70th anniversary project. Oh, yeah, weren't you guys planning to do the clock tower moving again? Yes, we wanted to inspect the inside of the tower before moving on with the project. That was when we saw a female doll in a red dress placed on the altar. Did the doll move? No, she was just sitting on the altar. It immediately gave us both the chill, so we decided to get out of the tower. But it was too late, we were already cursed. Okay, what's the curse? Um, is it okay if I tell him, Hime? Sure, go ahead. Only because I'm sure you'll believe us, Mr. Yashiki. Alright. Mikiho looks serious, which isn't a side of her I've seen often. You can see them, can't you? My white hair and the mark on Hime's face. Yeah, they really stand out. To tell you the truth, other people can't see them. Uh, aside from us, the only one who can see them is you. That's impossible, but how? Now that I think about it, there was definitely something off. Marius never even tried to hide her mark from others, and none of the mark wearers I've ever commented on Michi's white hair. It all makes sense now. It's because I'm the only one who can see them. I, I guess that's kind of obvious at this point. Uh, we've been this way ever since we met that doll. This must be the doll's curse. Um, yeah, why did, you, why did you never mention that until now? We actually told the doll manager about it before, but she didn't believe us. He thought we were just being weird kids. It was really hard on us. After that, we decided not to speak about it to anyone else. Toya suddenly casts her eyes on what seems like this has really taken a toll on her and Michiho. After that, we met you. I thought I noticed you staring at my mark. I was wondering whether you could see it back then. I remember you complimented my hair before. I thought it was me, you were the only one who could see these things. I was really happy about that. Michiho said we should talk about it with you, but I was afraid. This guy you looked at us weird. However, tonight I finally got the courage. Why well, am I the only one who can see this thing, so... Mm, I'm not too sure about why that is. And there's some spiritual, some spiritual occurrences that are only visible to you. Maybe your curse is like that. So is this another effect on my gifted supernatural sense? No, I'm... Oh, god, damn it, the, the mic. I, I hit my mic. Today is a bad day for me, damn! Um, it, it's, a, it, it, it's not a good day for this stream. <laughs> no, Yashiki, it's definitely just because they're related to the Departed. Like, we didn't even meet... Wait, did we meet any of them before we met the Departed? I don't think so, so it would only make sense. But you can see it because he got cursed too, or because the Departed wants to marry him. Anyway, tell me about the woes of being cursed girls. I recall the mark that was carved on my body four months ago. It was a dead curse. Undoubtedly, their curse also has the power to bring misfortune upon them. Have you experienced anything strange ever since you got the curse? Like a hell condition, hearing or seeing things? Nothing at the moment. I'm not sleep deprived and I'm and I and, and I still have my normal appetite. How are you, Hime? I'm fine too. I knew it. The curse is bad news, right? I mean, it's called a curse for a reason. But also, super weird that it has done nothing to you in the time that you had it. Considering that the curse thing for the mark bearers is, was like a couple of days and they were fucking dead. Uh, except Yashiki, but he was a special e exception. 
So I don't know, girls. I think you're lying to me. I think, I think you're trying to bamboozle me, and I don't like that. Uh, don't scare me like that. I feel like I've probably gotten all the information I need from them at the moment. Mr. Yashiki, I've been thinking about this for a while, but do you think the part of straight identity is a doll? Uh, let's say that I'm not sure just to not give it to you. Well, I believe she's a part of it. Even spears that were still in the clock tower have come out, and I'm sure that was our fault. But she looks different from the departed. If the departed can transform into a human, they can probably turn into other things too. Even this curse of ours is the departed's doing, that means it should be lifted once they're gone. Uchiko gives an abnormally loud shout. She seems to be to really believe the female doll is the departed. She was already investigating spirits and the departed when we first met. I understand what she was doing that now. She wasn't my rival, she was trying to find a way to lift her curse. If what Michiho said is true, the part of this case isn't just something that's happening randomly. There are incidents that both of us caused. Doryu. If you're gonna feel guilty, don't bring me into it, girl. I have to put an end to this case. Please let us help you out. No. Rejected. I've learned new information from the two of them. The evil darkness surrounding Konohara Academy continues to deepen. I wonder what that darkness will finally be when that darkness will finally be clear away and replaced by sunshine. Well not anytime soon. When we arrive at the dormitory, the dorm manager is waiting for us. Given the fact that they broke the curfew and returned this late at night, it's no wonder she's beside herself with rage. But I've already learned uh, the trick to dealing with her from her earlier phone call. She's only concerned about who is going to be held responsible for all this. Once I promise her that I won't tell the school about the curfew violation, she takes it down several notches. I say goodbye to Dorian and Michiho and leave the dormitory. Time to head back to Kuja Mansion. I hope my boyfriend is waiting for me there. Majita, please be there. Majita, I miss you. Please be there. My boyfriend is not here, this is the worst. There, I start compiling all the reports I need to submit to Mr. Kono, accompanied by a cup of sweet coffee. I wonder if, if, if I didn't put the sugar in the coffee, um, it would just say a cup of coffee. I'm sure I summarize this. If I mention the clock tower incident, I'm going to have to bring up the girls breaking curfew as well. That would betray the door manager and drain the image of those two students. Guess I should just stick to mentioning the pool ghost. Boyfriend? The black telephone rings loudly. Who's calling me this late at night? I hope it's boyfriend. Boyfriend? Hello? Fucking damn it! I just want my boyfriend to be back. I... I just want Mashita to be back. Um, it's me, Himeko Doryu. I wasn't expecting you to call this soon. Before we parted ways, I gave them the number to Kuja Mansion just in case. I just didn't imagine that you'd be using the number this soon. God fucking damn it! <sighs> Guys, bad news. The two bitches that are wheeling into me are probably definitely the departed at this point. Also, my boyfriend is in here. It's the worst. I want my boyfriend back. So, um, why do you call? Well, I wanted to thank you again for earlier. No, don't thank I was doing the adult thing. Come on. The Titanic, if I disappear, the Titanic exploded and the government is covering it up. Well, uh, good luck with that. What happened? Okay, so, first and foremost, um... OBS wasn't working because apparently my uh, my video drivers weren't updated, which is hilarious because I updated it like two days ago, so I had to re-update it again for some god awful reason. Thanks, Nvidia and or OBS. 
um, probably mostly OBS. And we continue where we left off in chapter four, where we were like going to take these two to the um, to the dorms, and then they reveal that the white hair and the mark that those two have. Um, only we can see it, but considering that we never, like... Considering that we didn't meet them until we, went, we, we got, like, cursed by the departed, what I'm taking, and, and they admitted that the curse that they have, like, the hair and the mark are curses, and they got them from the departed, probably, because the departed was sealed in the clock tower, probably, and all of the other ghosts were probably, um seal there and basically they enter there and blah 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 basically they're they're, they're responsible for all of the shit that's going on right now but also we're the only one who can see the fact that they have the mark on the hair and we only met them after getting like fucking mega cursed by the departed if memory serves me right so i'm assuming that actually they're the departed because then they decided to blame the doll that we've been seeing and the doll while, cre while creepy as fuck has not done anything to us except give us freaky visions which all things considered is pretty okay so i'm going to assume because also their, their cuss hasn't done anything like they have a mark on the white hair but also the, it, it has done nothing to them like they're not dying, they don't have an illness, they can sleep, they can eat, like, everything is fine with them. Even though it's been probably at least a couple of weeks since they got cursed. And considering the dead mark in the first game, like, a couple of days that you were fucking deceased. Like, I'm assuming they're the departed at this point. Like, one of them or both of them are the departed at this point. Like, come on, girls. I, I don't trust like that. <laughs> but also, I miss my boyfriend and I want him to be back. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, thank you for sharing your information with me, girls. That could be your help. I never expected to be an adult who would take us seriously. It made me very happy. Stop, stop being weird. Of course I believe you too. I can literally see the proof of what you're telling me with that mark of yours and Michiko's hair. Does that mean you wouldn't believe us if you couldn't see my mark? I mean, it would be harder to believe, girl. Um, I figured it'd be pretty difficult to just trust us, right? I mean, yeah, kind of. I have to go check a bath soon. Good night, Mr. Yashiki. Good night. Don't tell me about your bath. Don't be, don't be fucking weird. Girl, don't be weird. I hang up the phone once the conversation's over. I need to wash off my sweat and get some shut eye too. And also miss my boyfriend. Where is my boyfriend? I want Mashita, but I, but I can miss him. I collapse onto my bed and hope Mashita comes back. When I close my eyes, the smiles of the two girls I saved in I run through my mind. My tension melts away. For the first time in days, I experience that pleasant bliss of floating to dreamland and burning by the past few days events. Yeah, but where is my boyfriend? However, I know this tranquility tranquility is fleeting at best. Once a new notice arrives, I'll have to face the spectre again. And that's the end of chapter 4. And also, where is my fucking boyfriend? You hear her elemental <laughs> breakdown because the water texture is off. <laughs> oh, damn. It really though. A few days have passed since the incident in the clock tower. Okay, hospital is surprisingly empty for midday. Forgive the expression, but the place is basically dead. Silly. Funny haha, even. From the other side of the highway, a familiar looking man is approaching me. Mashita? Next to him is a small girl. Oh, I know who it is. Hey, Ada. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Are you also are you also here to visit Diamonita? Yeah, very much. She asked me to come with her. It's the lolly! Hi Susu! Oh you're adorable! 
she looks cuter than in the first game. No offense, Susu. Good afternoon. This girl is Susu Marimiya. She's been a great schooler. She's also one of the mark wearers. Sadly, the showed up from the first game does not appear back. He's, he's not back for this game. After a previous case, she's come to idolize Eita and treat him as her older brother. Eita, why are you talking to taking Susu here on a weekend afternoon? She's not skipping school, alright? Today is a school's anniversary. Um, I had a situation from Eita. Mr. Diamond's still asleep because of a spirit curse, isn't it? Isn't he? Most likely. No way. Her eyes are filled with deep sorrow. Don't you worry, Susu. We're gonna... We're gonna fix it up. Mr. Yashiki and I will definitely save Mr. Diamond, alright? Ita probably taps his chest while making that claim. I have no idea where that confidence comes from. It's not mine, I'll tell you that much. Despite my skepticism, the display brings a smile back to Susu's face. Ita, mister... Can I trust you two? Only Gardin, like Mr. Kid, damn! Yashiki, that's the kind of thing that Machita would say. He's rubbing off on you, in non-sexual ways, I mean. Damn. Damn, Yashiki, that's a little dark. Uh, thank you, mister. Anyway, Mr. Yashiki, I'll continue to back you up on your investigation. Eita, about that. Oops, let's save that for later. I gotta get Susu back home. I I'll go to Gujo Mandarin after that. Call me if you need anything. See you later, mister. Bye, Susu, I love you. He turns Susu leave after that. Wow, well, that was my chance to tell him. Following Sleep Mother to Kashima's case, I told Mo and Shot to stay out of the investigation, but Eita wasn't around, so I haven't told him yet. And he's not gonna listen. The character Susu Marimiya has been added to the character file. We will read that later. I finished my visit with Diamond and leave the hospital. He's still comatose, showing no sign of leaving limbo and rejoining the ranks of the conscious. The doctors have yet to identify the root of the, the root cause of his coma. It's a ghost. If it's truly the departed's curse that is behind his condition, he won't pull out of this so long as the departed still exists. I drive my car to Konohehara Academy, not my Vini van, because that would make me look weird. And you notice hasn't been discovered yet. But Mr. Konohe asked me to teach a class this afternoon against my will, because apparently now this is something that I do. They're not even paying me to do this shit. It sucks. I enter the classroom and take my place in front of the students. Then I proceed with the class, like usual. Rokono first asked me to teach as part of my investigation. I thought it would be an absolute disaster, but surprisingly, I'm doing just fine. The students just stare at my dump before most of the hour. On the other hand, the students seem to be doing markedly less fine. The number of fidgeting students that can't focus on class is too large to ignore. Considering some of them also asked me about my investigation, it's always what's on their minds. The pattern isn't just a fringe rumor anymore. The students have gone from being amused to being terrified. The human heart is a fragile thing. Seeing these kids with their flagging spirits, I know I need to hurry up and close this case. But that's not gonna happen for at least two more chapters because this is a seven chapter game and the seventh chapter is an extra one. It's, it's a bonus chapter. In what feels like the blink of an eye, class is over. The first time I thought, I felt like time stood still. It's kind of troubling to realize I've now been at it long enough that I'm used to it. After school, I start my investigation solo. I think back to my conversation with Dory and Michiho the other day. The partner might be someone close to me. In order to narrow it down, I make the rounds, asking teachers and students alike about the people involved in the incident. In which chapter we get the alternative horror gay sex? I'm hoping on this one, because Mashita should be appearing soon! And if he doesn't, I'm going to cry. I miss my boyfriend. <laughs> 
my efforts are fruitless, and all I get is a lot of small talk and wasted effort. I attempt to take a different angle to figure out the Departed's true identity and think it over. The Departed is good at hiding, let's say they're able to take the place of someone else. And when they do, they can perfectly duplicate that person's looks, memories and personality. It'd be the perfect disguise, nobody could see through that. With that level of deception, the only real chance to know their true identity would probably be once they achieve their goal, which will be which will likely be when they exchange vows with their dear husband, that's me. Oh no, what if I'm the departed? Don't trust anyone, not even yourself a moment. And for me, that would either be death or a fate worse than that. Marriage. To a woman. No offense, women. So I have to find the answer before then. I glance up and notice that it's already dark out. It's time for the students to leave school. I'm not getting anywhere by blindly hunt hunting for clues. I better go to the infirmary and put together a real plan of action. Okay, but where is my boyfriend coming back? I miss my boyfriend. I find a woman in a white coat waiting inside the infirmary. Hero? Hero, you're back? Hero, he 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 you're back? For a moment, I think she's a school nurse, but then I see her face. Domo. She's back! Big Iti Maroka is back! He, she had like gigantic boobs in the f in the first game. Remember the red riding hood case with her giant titties? I do. Giant fucking titties is what. Hello, Yashiki. I never would have imagined you'd be a teacher here. I was really shocked when I heard the news from Diamond. Hero, why are you here? To help you with it, to help you out with the investigation. What else would I be doing here? I never would have imagined I hear the word help coming out of Hero's mouth. That's gonna be a reason. Okay, what are you how how are you doing, girl? It's been a while, like four months in like in-game time. She's Madoka Hero. She wears a white coat, but not because she's a doctor. Hero's a mark bear who works at a pharma company as a researcher. If I remember correctly, you don't handle paranormal phenomena all that well. You got, you know, possessed at one time and tried to have sex with me while possessed. Well, true. I mean, after all the suffering I was put through before, how could I expect to like it? So why are you here then? Please, you're so annoying. I have my own reasons, alright? She's very intelligent, but Hiro also has quite a cowardly streak. However, there are times where her curiosity gets the better of her, and she ends up poking her nose into bizarre incidents. Call it a test of courage, I suppose. Anyway, why are you here, girl? To tell you the truth, I'm here because I've been asked. In the event that something were to happen to him, he asked that I come help you in his stead. Yes, I'm here. You sit up my paid leave. Either way, you're gonna have to repay me for that. I appreciate you taking your obligation to Diamond seriously, but... This case is extremely dangerous. There have been a lot of casualties already. Oh, come on now, don't patronize me. I'm fully aware of the dangers present. Then why are you... Because I want to save Diamond, simple as that. Do you... Do you... Do you... Do you have a crush on him? Hero? Hey, 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 hero. Hey, hero. Hey, hero. Hey, hero. Do you... Do you have a crush on Diamond? Do you, ha do you have a crush on Diamond? You have to tell me if, if you have a crush on Diamond, okay? I, I need to know. And my friends too, not just yours. Anyway. Okay, I'm gonna praise me of the situation. A spirit known as a departed issues and notices targeting people and then has other spirits kill them, correct? Yeah, and it has been pretty successful. They have a number of victims already. That spear seems to have some human tendencies, eh? You behave a bit like a serial killer. Part of it is different from any other spirit I've encountered so far. 
cunning and they possess the ability to pass themselves off as a human and hide within the school. And I've also had their obsessed with you, no? You sure have a strong connection with the spirits, Yashiki. I guess so. I wonder if that's just another aspect of my lineage, like the way I seem to be able to see paranormal phenomena without other scan. Shall we proceed with the investigation? Wait a minute, hero. I'm going to investigate alone. I don't want to get you involved in this. Say what? You're just going to disregard my feelings. I don't get a say in the matter. Hero, you're, you're, you're trying to emotionally manipulate me and I don't like that. Didn't you understand what I told you before? You're the only one who feels frustrated about what happened to Diamond. Uh, sorry. It's a sniffy stat. So you better teach that we I'm the only one who can carry this burden and I'll sacrifice myself, my set. It really gets on my nerves. But I'll just take Marius into my own house if you keep insisting I stay out of this. Just give it up. A triumphant smile brightens her features. I don't think I'm going to win a war with wits against her. I'm actually kind of dumb. Moving on to your investigation. I heard there's no new notice yet. As of this moment, this is correct. I have a feeling one will arrive soon though. Let's go check the faculty room. Could have a sixth sense or something. I guess you can call it that. I have a feeling the part that wants me, their dear husband, to continue pursuing this case. If my hunch is right, that means that they'll be more likely to issue a notice while I'm here at school. Maroka Hero has signed the investigation. The character Maroka Hero has been added to the character file. Let's go, bitch. Also, is there anything new for me to uh, trade? No. Damn it. And there's another eight uh, low souls in this chapter. Let's see if there's anyone in the other rooms before we go there. No one here. Okay. And is there anyone in the library? There's no one here. Okay, fine. You want me to go to the faculty room? I get it. When I get to the room, one of the teachers informs me that Mr. Kono is away at the moment. Which unfortunately means I'm going to have to ask Sakamoto. Nice lady who hates me. Goodness gracious you again. Sakamoto's cold tone of voice makes it apparent that she finds this meeting just as unfortunate as I. What's your business here? I have work to do. It's a new notice from the party that arrived. Notice. Oh, now that you mention it, I did get a report of something like that earlier. What about it? What are you being so nonchalant for? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I believe I made my position quite clear. I find this investigation of yours to be, at best, a pointless waste of time. Me, uh, reminding people that three, four kids died already? Bitch. Sakamoto shoots a withering glare in my direction, looking like she just swallowed a bug. She's usually pretty open about her dislike of me, but she's taking it to another level today. I got a report from the manager the other day. She informed me that you took Doryu and Kinokawa out and made them violate their curfew. The headmaster may have ordered me to let you abs your absurd behavior slide, but this is unacceptable. So that's why she's being particularly hostile toward me today. I didn't make those girls break curfew, but I can't see how it's skew that way in Sakamoto's mind, and I doubt my explanation would change much. Those notices are pranks. It's a mere coincidence that the students disappear when the notices were issued. Ma'am, I don't know how to tell you this, but if this has happened over three times, that's some weird fucked up, like, 
notice appears, and then the student that notice is associated with immediately disappears. Nobody can find them. It might be related. Just saying, it might be related. This is not a oh it happened once. This is this has happened like four times already. Come on, bitch. The packet goes to supernatural. It's all a bunch of ludicrous nonsense. To think a man like you has solid the good name of teacher just to investigate this rubbish. Takamoto's practically got steam coming out of her ears. I wonder what I can do to calm her down. Let me delicate. Trying to convince ardent non-believers of the supernatural can only make both sides frustrated. It's a waste of energy to try. Let's just get what I need and get out of here. Where's the new notice? I don't have it with me. I told the student who picked it up to throw it away. You told them to do what now? Which student was it? Takuta from the disciplinary committee. He pointed one patrol in the school. What does he look like? He's a strapping, well-built boy. Why do you call him strapping? He's in the karate club. Oh my, look at the time. I have to go now. I have a meeting. I'm going to fucking strangle her. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you fucking mean? That you ask them to just throw it away. <laughs> Bitch. You know, I'm actually angry at this one. Before I can even protest, Sakamoto already left the room. But the teachers are following suit. Well, she's clearly not a fan of your Yashiki. Yeah, you don't fucking say, hero, sweetie honey darling. Well, you pretty much earned that treatment for hitting on high school students. I didn't do that! That's literally the one thing I didn't do! That's not what happened. Stop making things weird. Looks like we're going to have to put in some effort to find this Kakuda boy. I mean, we might stumble upon him simply by stopping to talk to each stout student we see on the way. But it'd be nice if we had a bit more information to go on. It's almost like she gave us as little as possible on purpose to fuck us over. Oh, that's exactly what she did. Shit. More information. Norio and Michiho might know him. Sakamoto's obviously going to, keep, to be keeping a close eye on my contact with those two, but I can't let that interfere with my work. Ah oh boy, we're gonna have to talk to those two again. Motherfucker. Okay, yeah, so you're in the fucking student council room. So you is organizing documents in the studying council room, thank the lord. One of them at least. Oh, Mr. Yashiki, thank you again for your help. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry, and I just need information, and then I'm gone, and never talk to me again, okay? Do you know Kakuta? I heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I know him. He's in 2C. How about you try looking for him in his classroom? Got it, thanks. Excellent. Thanks, Carol. Let's -a go. What is Man, Hiro, you're tiny. I, I never noticed that she was this short. <laughs> Damn, girl. You're that short and that stacked, huh? But also, I kind of love that everybody just walks with their hands in their pockets, except with Yashiki up until this point. Like, this has been a consistent thing that has happened. It's just like walking with their hands in their pockets. She does a girly run! Oh, I love that shit! I wasn't expecting her to do the, the, the girly run. Hey, what's your, um... What's your idol? Hey, what's your idol animation? Come on. Come on. The sounds? Yeah, she also kind of does hashtag sex sounds. Ooh. Oh, so she stretches. Oh, that's nice. I love when they put so much work in that kind of thing. I just, I just love that kind of shit. 
Oh wait, it's you. Wait, let me let me talk to your ass first. Oh hello there! I caught a painted lady in the courtyard earlier. Want to catch some butterflies together? Sorry, but I'm in a hurry now. Do you know the good time here? He's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. Oh, I saw him going to the third floor just now. What business do you have with that karate guy, though? Is the new notice targeting the karate kid or something? I don't know yet, but thanks for the info. Okay. You're not built. There's no one here. It's closed. Mm. Windows are covered by curtains. It's, it's weird, like sometimes there's curtains drawn that make no sense, honestly. This is empty. This is a news, and I'm pretty sure I saw you. There you are. You're probably the guy. There's a big well-built guy standing over here, well, there, but it's also here because I'm where I'm standing too. He looks pretty strapping. Are you Kakuda? Who's? Yes, that's the name, Shinichi Kakuta. Where's the departed's notice? I'm hoping you haven't thrown it away already. No, I still have it. Miss Sakamoto told me to trash it, but I feel like I should show it to you since you're investigating them. Thank you. You're the most useful person in this room at this point. No offense, Hiro. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you should thank Dorio and Kinukawa. They've been asking everyone to pitch in and help you out. I'm not gonna thank them, they're weird. He pulls out the part that's nerdy and hands it to me. If that's it, I'll be heading to my classroom. Feel free to come by to see if you still need anything. I'll be at the school for a while. Okay. What's the notice? Come on, give me, give, give me, give me, give me the material game. Kakuta then walks off. I quickly scan the new notice. It has all the hallmarks of the previous notices. An accordion folded piece of paper with eerie handprints on it, made of mold. So this is what a notice looks like, huh? <laughs> it's really giving off the horror vibes. Hurry up and check it out, come on. Let's see. Dear Hooligan, Kokuri will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved the departed. Notice for Hooligan. Hmm. The next victim is Hooligan and the spirit is Kokuri. So by Hooligan, they mean those boorish duck types, right? Yeah, so fit. So I think we should try and gather information that would lead us to the identity of these two things. Asking the remaining students would probably be more fruitful than asking the teachers. The faculty doesn't seem so cooperative. Yeah, and uh, maybe that student council guy will tell you. I, I mean, she actually appears to be trying to help you. Also, I'd like to hear more about that Kakuta kid. Well, from that Kakuta kid. Yeah. What's with you? Yeah, come on, give me more, wo more to work with than that. In your operation here, don't make me handle everything alone. Okay. As much as I want to point out that she's cut me off every time I try to speak. I hold my tongue. Besides, your plan of attack is basically what I would have suggested. You better start asking around about Hooligan and Kokuri. Well then. Kakuta Shinichi Kakuta has been added to the character file. Well, there were no one around this area, so... Except you. It's about time to leave school anyway. I got to prove to the departed won't appear even if I stay here alone. And I got this, Kukuri, that, the people in this school are wacky. No one believes ghosts and demons exist. I mean... I do, but that's because I've seen, like, four of them at this point. Maybe even five. Closely, the male students' legs are obviously trembling. 
Daddy. Uh, anyone on this side? Doesn't seem like it. Do you find Kakuta? Yeah, thank you. I'm happy that I could help. So, what do you want to talk about? Actually, we've fallen in notice. Whoa, so another one's finally here, huh? Show me. Show me Chiho the Departed's uh, notice. Heh, <laughs> so the next period is Kukuri. Well, Kukuri usually refers to that old fortune telling technique, but I'm sure you already know about that, right? No. Explain to you then. Kukuri is a fortune telling technique that is a coin and a piece of paper. You can summon a spirit named Kukuri and ask them some questions. It can be dangerous since you're dealing with a spirit, after all. There are some people who get a big scare out of it. But the Kukuri mentioned in the notice a ghost, not the fortune telling technique. So Kukuri is both the name of the technique and the summoned spirit. And the rumor is referring to the spirit. Can you tell me more about it, Michiho? Sure, why not? That reminds me. Hime and I were called by Miss Akamoto this afternoon. Do you know what she said? Don't get too close to Mr. Yashiki, he doesn't belong here. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have talked to you. She's probably gonna give you a lecture. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're my lifesaver and you're hunting the party like I am. I don't trust you. I don't trust you like this, girl. So about the Kukuri in the notice. I thought Pinin might be referring to Mr. Kukuri. Ooh, he has like a Mr. and everything. It's a rumor like that at Konohara Academy. Gosho. Kukuri Ojisa. Okay. Have you ever gone to the corridor on the second floor? Of course no, that place is restricted. You know why? It's because of the Kukuri Shrine. That place is cursed. I'm not lying, it's the truth. I even heard stories about it. In rainy days. Some delinquent uh, on a rainy day, uh, wondering. Ah, come on, I can't read today. One rainy day, some delinquents are hanging out on the second floor corridor. It's like my eyes don't want to concentrate on what I'm reading. They were kind of notorious. They were getting in fights on a daily basis. There were even rumors that they were into drugs. I guess I must have been bored. So they were messing around with the shrines so there and laughing with their stupid faces. They were kicking the shrine and screaming on it, all sorts of things. One of them even put a cigarette on it. The wind and rain got stronger. The delinquents were about to head back inside. At that moment, a voice mixed with the wind. Okay. They turned toward the old shrine, the source of the voice, fearing someone would have been playing a prank on them. Except they were the only ones in the corridor. Obviously, they thought they were just imagining things. The delinquents looked at each other and ran away from the corridor as fast as they could. But that night, did they all get fucking murdered? One of the delinquents, the one who snuffed out his cigarette onto the shrine, had a pain in his ear. He felt a strange sensation when he touched his ear. It was dry and rough. It was weird, but there was something in his ear. Terrified, he went to check himself in the mirror. Oh. Mushrooms were growing from his ear. Folded cup mushrooms that look like maitake. The mushrooms continued to spread from his ear to his neck to his cheeks and his chin. The delinquent shrieked and then... 
He called an ambulance. He got himself checked at the hospital. He found no trace of mushrooms. But his ears had a really bad infection. The skin was rotting away, so they had to cut his ear off. E. When a teacher heard this story, they said it's the curse of Kukuri's shrine. That once was having been Mr. Kukuri's, and that was his work. Nothing like mushroom horror. Rumors say Mr. Kukuri is the apparition of a priest who haunts the shrine. And that was a rumor about Mr. Kukuri. So please stay away from the shrine in the second floor's corridor. Me, immediately, I'm gonna go check the shrine in the second floor's corridor. If you're cursed by the mushroom, your lovely face will be ruined. Lovely? Look, I know that it kinda look like Van Levada's hero, but... Lovely? So maybe... Not lovely. Is Mr. Kukuri the name of the shrine? Correct. It's called Mr. Kukuri because the shrine has a mysterious voice. No one knows what Mr. Kukuri looks like, as they've only heard his voice. Creepy, isn't it? Okay, tell me about the hooligan. Hooligan? Hmm, I can't think of anyone. Maybe he's Sumi, I guess, but he's dead already. Oh, that didn't help a lot. By the way, Mr. Yashiki, I've never seen the person beside you. Is she a doctor like, the, like Mr. Diamond? the way, do you know that Hero is the one party member that dies this chapter if you fuck up? Because she is. You're definitely the departed, you white-haired bitch. I'm a researcher, not a doctor, though I do also deal with the health of living beings as part of my job. Oh, I see, a knight or a female scientist, huh? You sure have some amazing and gorgeous assistants. Yeah, that's the uh, jealousy talking. Stop trying to murder me and murder my friends, you weird -ass spirit. By the way, which one do you prefer? They both dependable in their own ways. I has the stamina, hero has the intelligence. That's not what I mean. Oh well, it was a bit of me to, to expect something. Ah, oh, you two sure are close. This girl might be the departed, you know? That's what I said the last time that we had that conversation. Shush, hero. You might be right, but don't say it out loud. She might try to kill you. Oh, I don't mind as long as Mr. Yashiki trusts me. Yeah, I don't trust you. That's the thing. Sorry, it's a joke. I'm kind of on edge since we don't have any idea who the departed might be. I don't mind. In this kind of situation, it's natural to have some suspicion. Uh, I mean, my normal school life. <laughs> Hey, Yashiki. Hey. 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 Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. What? Slut. Shouldn't we be able to pretty much guess who Hooligan might be? Based on what Michiho told me about the Mr. Kakuri rumors. Wait, Kakuta? I mean, it would make more sense if he's the delinquent student. I don't see why Kakuta would be. I agree with you there, but I still have no clue who it might be. The former said a delinquent student was cursed by the shrine in the second floor corridor. Why don't we go take a look there? Wait, are you serious? Can you be into Cavalier here? We're going to be stepping into some deep shit if we approach the shrine. I'm not doing it for entertainment, it's for the investigation. You can stay here if you don't want to go. I never said I didn't want to go. Just wondering if there was a better way to do this. But that's it, I'm not scared at all. Yeah, okay. Alright, it's on the other side. Hi, girls. Are the only ones left in the school? Nope, I think the student council members are still here. And they sure like to stay late despite all the rumors. I don't really fear the party since I know you're going to protect me. 
are you talking about? I'm totally not saving you. I'm not good with ghosts and stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go home now. What? Me too. The female students take the stairs down. Their friends. I'm wondering if there's anyone here in the second floor where we're at it. Their friends. Aren't you gonna go, like, home soon? Hello, Mr. Yashiki, do you still need anything from me? Uh, let's chat for a little bit. I've actually read that notice. A spirit named Kukuri is going to kill Hooligan tonight, right? Well... Mr. Konoe told me not to discuss the incident with the students out of consideration for their mental well-being. I can't just give him a dismissive reply, though. No need to hide it, the rumors have spread. He's assuming the pianist and Hiori Koshi the model have been killed, just as the notice said, anyway. And the one who killed them was a spirit named the Departed, right? They're hiding in the school right now. If rumors of the incident have already spread to this extent, I'm not doing anyone any favors or keeping my mouth shut. I doubt these rumors have been purposely spread by one target, by, by any one target, rather. These students believe in the Departed, and they're connecting the dots and spreading the rumors on their own. The weaker students must be tired of living in fear, because they're scared of the idea that the person next to them might be the Departed. You're not scared, Kakuta. Me? Scared? <laughs> no way. If a spirit dares to show itself to me, I'll just go to work with this face. <laughs> That's not how it works, idiot. Because I don't really understand spirits. Uh, how about asking Kinukawa from Scooter Council? Uh, she seems to know a lot about this kind of stuff. Do you have any idea about the hooligan? You are in the disciplinary committee. That's the person mentioning the notice, right? Do you have any idea who it might be? Mm, we're talking about hooligans at the school. I can only think of the delinquents. The punks keep ignoring the school rules and it's really pissing me off. The court is on the disciplinary committee, so it's not surprising that the behavior of some punks has got him all right up. Oh, that wasn't particularly useful. You didn't give me any names. My brother in Christ, I need names. I need, like, names. I need their identities, if you will. I find a door leading to the emergency exit. Wait. Where is he? Oh, wait, he's on the other side. Uh, right, okay, I think it. This, this game requires a map. I, I wish this came with a map. You know, for, the, for simplicity's sake. There it is, connecting corridor. The second floor's corridor should, should be just ahead. It's a crumpled paper in the gap between the doors. Warning, the second floor corridor is off limits. Not if you're ya cheeky! The shine where people supposedly hear Mr. Kukuri's voice should be right ahead. Looks like the door's unlocked. Wait, so it's off limits? Would you live in unlocked? Are you stupid or something? Let's check the place out. Like, that's super a way to get people to just enter the fucking corridor, just saying. Let's check if there's anything on the other side. The door is locked and tightly shut. I'm kinda do the old building from here. You know what that big straw rope in front of the door is? I have a feeling he's telling us not to enter, like in a spiritual sense. I'm getting ghost bumps. Oh, come on, I've been in the old building a lot. It's fucked up, but it's fine. Hi, ma'am. That is the face of someone who has seen the unseeable. A tanned and sustaciously styled girl is absentmindedly lingering near the shrine. Um, hi. Uh, hello there. <sighs> Yeah, she's she's fucked up. Her reply is unintelligible, more of a groan. Just ignore her, Yashiki. She's definitely possessed. Something's wrong with her. Ugh. My honest reaction to that. 
Mm -hmm. Antipedes? Or milli... No, 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 those are not millipedes, those are centipedes. Why centipedes, though? Another shrine is standing here. This has gonna be the shrine from the rumor about Mr. Kukuri. Let's take a closer look. I'm making quips. Man, I want quips. I I wish. I wish I had quips. Man. The first thing that stands out is that it's a rather small shrine. It's completely weathered after being exposed to the elements for a long period of time. Another noticeable feature is the number of talismans on it. The image of the, on the talismans looks kind of like a centipede. There's a small gap in the shrine door. It's too dark to know what's inside though. We need to open the door first if we want to see what's inside. Well... Time to regret our choices! Reach over the door to check what's inside. Uh, Old man. Yes. The female student next to me groans and slowly forces out some words. Don't do anything bad to the shrine. Sweetie, I'm just gonna open the door. Like, I would need to do that if I wanted to clean it, for example. I'm just gonna open the door. Chill. Uh, uh. Oh man. You're. Yeah? Oh. You're a good one! Sweetie, I'm not doing anything. Growling, the female student launches an attack. Well, that's. Um, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> With a terrifying look in her eyes, the female student raises something resembling a baton. I see something that looks like mushrooms around her neck. Maybe she's possessed. strike bad. When someone is possessed, the best idea is to put them out of the room. Before she can attack us, we land a solid hit with our combined strength. What's that? The female student recoils. Grab her here. Okay. Calm down. Hero captures the student's arms from behind. Helping out, I immediately restrain her. <laughs> well, she's having a moment. The student lets out a yell and then goes quiet. Looks like this is the right choice. Remember, kid at, uh, kids attacking a uh, um, young lady is perfectly valid. The student faints and the mushrooms on her neck instantly vanish. So it really was a spiritual phenomenon. Assuming the rest of the rumor is accurate, that would mean the mushrooms were the shrine's curse. Keep an eye on her, hero. I'll investigate the inside of the shrine. Sure things. Do whatever you want, Yashiki, Jesus Christ. I walk toward the shrine and put my hand on the door. There's a talisman on it. And what's inside? Inside the shrine, I find some bizarre stuff. That's... Petri dish used for experiments. Inside the dish is a dead centipede. That's a very weird centipede, though. Some red substance appears to be growing from the centipede. What in the world is it? Mold, maybe? I mean, that's not mold, but like, maybe the same kind of red mold thing that comes with the party? Oh, I see you found something interesting. Those red female elements are probably mushrooms. It's difficult to tell without the caps. Oh. Without me realizing it, heroes are already peering over my shoulder. 
Looks like those are mushroom people growing on the dead centipede. I think they're all three cordyceps synesis. Very interesting. But what's it doing here? All shrines are usually a place where you'd store love equipment. What are you going to do with the petri dish? But you're going to but you're gonna keep it. I guess so, yeah. Pressed by Hero, whose eyes are sparkling with curiosity, I collect the petri dish. Obtain creepy petri dish. What are we gonna do with her? He doesn't seem like she's going to regain consciousness anytime soon. We can't just leave her here. Let's take her back to the infirmary. I hoist the female student onto my back and leave the corridor. From there, I walk straight to the infirmary. The smell of cigarette smoke assaults my nose the moment I end. <gasps> Mashita? 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 You're one of the few characters in this series that smokes. Mashita? マジ、くたびれたぞ。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ガイスボーイフレンド。ガイスボーイフレンドスパック。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ファミスパック。ファミス
because of his child, he's a seasoned veteran when it comes to cases involving dangerous and bizarre spirits. By that I mean he helped me like in four cases and he is my boyfriend. If he's offering to help, I'll jump on it because he's my boyfriend. His help makes it that much more likely that here under the departed targets will survive. Sorry for causing you trouble. Save your thanks for the old bag. I'm just here to work. And maybe have sex in the infirmary. You're not allowed to do that! Shut up, hero. Anything. A -a anyway, boyfriend, what do you think about this case? Yasuka gave me a summary of the case. A spirit masquerading as a student, huh? Wonder how their grades are. He's cracking jokes, but his eyes show no trace of a smile. On the surface, he must be just as tense as we are. You wanna know what I think? You're basically being jerked around by the departed's notices. All those spirits from the nurses, and you're no closer to figure out who the, the departed is. Maybe you're right. But if I just ignore the notices, someone's going to die. And what's your plan, Mr. Smarty Pants? Mr. Spirit uh, Genius? What are his stats? We'll check his stats in a sec. You're just gonna keep dancing to their tune until they get bored and quit. That's... Don't get sidetracked and forget your original goal, Yashiki. The only way you can solve this case is to find the departed hiding in this school. And what you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. He's right, you know. Boyfriend. By the way, Ashiki, Majita jerks his head over in the direction of the girl on the bed. Tell me about her already. How long are you gonna make me wait? Don't make me get jealous. I share everything I've learned about Mr. Kokuri and Hooligan and the events at the shrine. <laughs> so this kid attacked you? School violence is kind of a lost art these days. What a special moment in your teaching career, huh? <laughs> Mr. Yashiki. Put it out with that. Hearing you say that makes my skin crawl. I don't like being the mister in this relationship. Can I just call you mister? No. Let me have this one. Jesus. No, my how you choose to look at it. This kid isn't normal. He called us hooligans and had mushrooms growing along her neck. Right, considering that, maybe she was possessed by Kukuri. Hi, CG, that was horny in a weird way. I recall the time Michiho was possessed by Slit Mounted Kashima. She was fully under the control of the spirit, led by their desires. This student might have been the same as her. Who is this kid anyway? She doesn't have her student handbook, and no matter how much we shake her, she is not showing any signs of waking up. Waiting for her to wake up is such a waste of time. Let's just ask someone else about her. To be able to find someone who knows who she is pretty quickly, she's obviously trying to stand out. Let's ask around the petri dish to while we're at it. Who knows? Maybe we can learn who plays this inside the shrine. So we're just going to show that thing to the students? They're going to start talking about me. <laughs> Don't like to worry about your reputation. They're already doing that, you idiot. You already tricked two female students into breaking the curfew. I don't care if you get out chummy with those parats for the investigation. But... You better not do something weird that ends up blowing back onto me, Yashiki. I'm going to be very jealous about this situation, just so you know. I'm not gonna talk about it, but I'm going to be jealous about it. Give me a break, you two. I really hope this puts a stop to this topic. I'll have whoever I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the unconscious girl while I resume the investigation. Let's see if anyone at the school can tell me about this girl or the petri dish. That's made on the subject delinquent girl and creepy petri dish. Satoru Mashita has an investigation my boyfriend is back! The, the character Satoru Mashima has been added to the character file. My boyfriend is back, I miss him. Okay, first let me check if there's anything new here. No. God fucking damn it. Let's change. Let's change character because I wanna be Mashita. Grace Unorthodox Ex Detective. Irrepressibly curious researcher. Uh, those subtitles are so good. Let's see. 
The female soon hasn't come to yet. I'll call Mash just fine if she does. Just keep going with your initiation. Okay, yeah, let's check the stats. Um, uh, e? Strength 19, Intelligence 16, Dexterity 6, and Spiritual Power 7. Okay, that's... An old, old oil lighter. Okay, let's check the... Uh, Heroes calculator. Let's read those two. Um, Mashita's favorite favorite item: a simple oil lighter made of silver. She uses it often, and parts of it have tarnished. Oh, memento given from a senior detective. Ah, oh, that's from the first game. Like the senior detective that um, that died, and he was still investigating the case even when she didn't have the mark anymore. Man. And then he got marked again, and then he saved. We saved his ass, and then he left. I love my boyfriend. I'm so glad he's back. Hero's favorite item. A scientific calculator she's been using since her school days. The printing on the keys has worn off, but she's memorized them all. What at school store. Man, that's a that's a lot of use for a calculator. And let's see character files. Uh Susus is in it too. Okay, a calm girl despite her young age. She has been friends with the protagonist ever since he saved her life in a bizarre case. She's polite and mature most of the time, but she also shows her childish naivete, considers Eita Nakamatsu her older brother and relies on him. Hiro? Hiro Madoka. Pharmaceutical researcher. She's been friends with the protagonist. Yeah, yeah, I save her ass. A person who hates things unexplainable by logic. She willingly risks her life to save her curiosity. We are not gonna find out how exactly sure she is until we finish this case. And Mashita. Mashita Satoru, Moto Dekada. A blunt, sarcastic former police detective. Ever since the protagonist saved his life in a bizarre case, he's been working as a private detective. Most of his requests involve spirits, so he's formed a deep bond with the protagonist. He not really pursues a case until the end. Ah yes, a deep bond. Boyfriends. And... Kuta was the last... Yeah, I think we read every other... Wait, the Kai, did we read this? Yeah, no, we read this, so, um... Pikuti is the last one we didn't read. Akonohara is second year who enjoys karate. More well-built than the average shock. He's part of the disciplinary committee and found the departed's notice on one of his patrols. He has a favorable opinion of the protagonist and willingly assists with the investigation. I can't believe my boyfriend is back. I've missed you so much. Mashita, I'm so glad you're here. But let's see Mashita's... Uh, I, I hope that we can see Mashita's walking cycle. Oh, hi, you. Here you find Kakuta. Yes, along with a new notice. And also, a stout girl. So there's another new notice. Mind showing me? I guess my better judgment, yeah. I should order you the part this notice. So they're trying to kill someone again. And it's my job to prevent that from happening. If you got any information that could help, please let me know. Sure. Oh, that reminds me. I've been wondering about this for a little bit. I realized that you started calling me Chiho by her first name. Um, am I telling me why? I had a feeling this would come out up. Uh, actually, I told her about how Michiho forced me to call her by her first name if I wanted her to cooperate. It was very uncomfortable and I hated every second of it. I figured. I couldn't imagine someone as serious as you just deciding to be so casual with our students. You yeah, bring on a new good point. What do you think? Should we go back to calling her by her last name? N no, don't do that. Michiho will hate me. Why would she? 
And she's trying to get along with you in her own way. So I don't want to interfere with her wishes like that. So, Alright. I'm probably gonna regret this. Okay, let's see. Kukuri. Sorry, I don't really know much about spirits. You should ask Michiho instead. She's over on the second floor of the new building. Okay. Uh, hooligan? Hooligan, huh? Compared to model and pianist, this one's got a lot more room for interpretation. Finding the target might not be so easy. Delinquent girl? I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I have an idea of who she is. It might be one of the first years, Saki Maruhashi. Oh hey, that's um... She's related to Maruhashi from NG. Remember the fat guy who gets killed no matter what you do because um, someone has to die in this game at least once? The the guy who used to be in a, in a biker gang and then just joined this Yakuza. Yeah, it's, she's related to that guy. Good news, he's not dead yet because this is an interquel, but also, bad news, he's going to die. What's she like? I don't know her personally, but some of the first year council members were telling me some things. They said that she's never had any friends and is always on her own. She's got a bad rep because of it. There's nobody to defend her. There are all kinds of rumors surrounding her, saying she likes to go out at night, drink and smoke, and she's associated with a biker gang. These might be just rumors, but if they're true, that makes Saki Maruhashi a kid worthy of the name Hooligan. Creepy Petri dish. I take out the creepy petri dish and show it to Doryu. Uh, what, what is that? And that centipede and what, what are those red things? They're actually mushrooms. Do you know anything about this petri dish? Not at all. I don't know anything at all about it. Mr. Yashiki, can you please keep it away from me? Oh, uh, y yeah, sorry about that. I forget a lot of girls don't like insects. Don't you breathe is a huge sigh of relief when I put the petri dish back into my bag. Her reaction's totally normal. Mashita and I have just become so sensitive to these sort of creepy things that we forget how normal people view them. And let's stop talking. I finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student, the student council room. Let's see, who's in the faculty room? I hope not Sakamoto for the love of god, I don't want to talk to her. There's no one here, let's go somewhere else. Thank the lord. Let's go to the library, see if there's someone there. There's no one here. Oh, okay. That's a surprise. I guess let's go to the newbie. <laughs> but she does walk in psycho! He also <laughs> boyfriend. Look at that. Look at that high difference. Look at that high difference. The, the vibes of the high difference. Guys, the vibes of the high difference. The vibes of the high difference. Look at the high difference. He, he, he's, look at the high difference. Oh, he, ah, that's, that's his idol. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And he doesn't put his hands in his pockets. I love this man. Hey, when we're home together, sounds almost sad. Why me? So you don't care if I get killed by the departure on my way home? What? That's not what I said. Let's go home together then. Uh, fine, what a pain. Make him run in a sack. The people who look like siblings leave the classroom. I, I'll, I'll, I'll check his, um, his running uh, cycle in a sec. Let's see. It's, it's kind of similar to Yashiki's running cycle, which makes sense. He's running some co of someone who knows that how to run. To, you know, waste the least amount of energy possible. Not, not very hashtag sex noises, but a little bit of hashtag sex noises. Bulletin board. Yeah. A handwritten notice, huh? I suppose there's evidence that it's written by a human. Mashita, we've been here for so long. You have to admit that he's a fucking ghost at this point. Don't be weird about it. We're trying to be like, ah, that was definitely written by a human. Come on, Mashita. 
because I'm continuing the investigation in other places. The school is getting strange these days. I know, right? It smells musty here. Is it because of the departed? Oh, I heard there's an, out an outbreak of mold somewhere in the school. Yikes, just imagine that makes my skin itchy. Anyway, let's go home. Yeah. Well, we know that the, the party is related to mold, so the couple leave the area. Anything new here? Mm. Well, the things will be happy for the time being. Okay, yeah, same as before. Taking it easy, huh? I'd rather have them temporarily close the school. I love how you're a responsible man sometimes. Not all the time, but just when it matters the most. I love my boyfriend, I'm so happy he's here. Right, this is probably close, so let's go to the other, uh, to the other classrooms. Hi, you. Uh, I was just thinking about insects. Cabbage worms are cute, don't you think? No. So, what do you want to ask me? Don't pay any attention to what Mr. Komoto said. Kimi and I are your allies, and we're being super weird about it, too. Don't worry about it. Uh, we talked about these two, so the little girl? She's got the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I've seen her before, but I don't know her name. I'm not a delinquent after all. And what about the Petri dish? I took out the creepy Petri dish and showed it to Michiho. Oh, a Chinese redhead! Lapendra subspinipeds uh, mutilans. You know, even though the name centipede means hundred foot, these aren't many, there aren't many centipedes that actually have a hundred feet. I think like only a few soil centipedes have that many feet. And the millipedes don't have um, um, a, a thousand either. Seizing the opportunity to talk about insects, Michiko immediately begins flexing her knowledge about centipedes. She doesn't even have a reaction to the terrible sight inside the dish. Hey, um, I appreciate the centipede lesson, but uh, what about the mushrooms? Hey, so these red thingies are mushrooms. No clue, it's beyond my scope of knowledge. Oh, I see. Thanks. Judging by that reaction, Michiho won't be able to tell us anything useful about the Petri dish. Well, that was useless. Excuse me. Let's check the other wombs. different chat and more and more students are getting terrified by the part that that's not a good thing at all. If you ask me though, I think I need to train my mind and body more. Don't be weird. Anyway, I discovered the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. Yeah, I know her. She always hangs out in the connecting corridor. She keeps going there even though I've warned her so many times. This is why I hate delinquents. They're stupid. Do you know anything else? Nothing in particular. I don't really care to know about delinquents. If she wasn't a girl, I would have punched her, her in the face. You know, it doesn't make it better that you didn't punch her because she's a woman. You shouldn't punch people. Hey, now, aren't you in the karate club? Male or female, students shouldn't fight with each other. <laughs> I'm just joking. Martial arts should be used to, do, used to train your mind and body, not hurt others. I don't trust like that. I take the creepy petri dish from my bag and show it to Kakuta. What? The moment he sees the dish, his eyes bulge. What's wrong, Kakuta? No, it, it just... My apologies, it's so disgusting, I don't even know what to say. Centipedes are a lot are already gross, but the mushrooms just make it so much worse. What are you finding? The science room? Wait! You know they're mushrooms. We didn't fucking re realize that, and nobody else except Hero fucking figured it out. And she's a goddamn pharmaceutical like researcher. No, it was inside the shrine in the second floor connecting corridor. Uh, what was this thing doing in there? I have no idea either. That is a prank. Oh. Uh, I 
time to get back to patrolling. Sorry, we're going to end our chat here. Yeah, he's definitely involved in this shit, huh? We could have been this very well and quickly leaves the classroom. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Everybody keeps doing that. What do you want? I miss you too. Aww. Something's off with that brat statement. You must have noticed it too, right? What's up about Kakuta's statement? Yeah, what he said about the mushrooms. He said mushrooms, of course. When I first saw that Petri dish, I didn't even realize they were mushrooms. But Kakuta noticed it that right away. That's a bit strange. Alright, I see your brain is working just fine. I'm glad that you haven't, like, suffered any brain damage while I wasn't around, because that could happen. Remember when you almost fell from, like, a fifth floor? Or was it sixth floor? I don't even remember. Remember when that happened and I saved your ass? Yes, why should I remember? Exactly. Hey, he might know where the mushrooms came from. We better speak to the Kuda again. He should still be at school. Let's go find him. Well then... Let's just check the other classrooms, just in case. And then we'll go uh, check him out. Probably on the third floor. Uh, I miss my boyfriend. This is the best day ever because my boyfriend is bad. Let's see. The one on this side. Oh, the science room. It's open. Okay, I'll check it in a sec. Okay, no one in this classroom, so... Let's talk to the kid here. Ah, Kakuta. He's not here. Okay. And he's not here. And he's not here either, it seems. Okay, then let's go to the science room then, because obviously there has to be something there for the door to be open. Oh, a large shelf with a glass door, flask and vials are stored inside. You know, like in a science room. The clearly lab equipment used for class, I better not touch them. If I break them, it's gonna cost me a lot of money. Cool. A large shelf with a glass door, just tubes and tripods are stored inside. For some reason, there are a number of dead insects stuck on the door. You can't get replicable results when you have contaminants in your receptacles. Recept receptacles. Is it like this in every school? No. But also, the part that is here, Mashita, mash please. The part that is here. Mm -hmm. A pile of cases used for carrying equipment. I shake it lightly, but it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. Bear. Hi. Were you, um... Were you petting the bear? Were you petting the bear? Were you petting the bear? That's a cute, like, wooden bear. I, I'll forgive you your petting the bear. The us inside the uh, storage room. Several documents are scattered on the floor below him. It looks as if the room has been ransacked. Mr. Yashiki, I didn't do this. The room was already a mess when I came in. Please, you gotta believe me. Please tell me what happened here first, Kakuta. Y yes. When I was patrolling the school, I saw someone coming out of the science room. They seemed kind of suspicious, so I decided to check it out. Am I supposed to believe you? The room looked the same as it always does, but I unlocked the storage room here to have a look just in case. That's when I found this mess. That's what you're saying happened. Yes, that's what really happened. 
and I could have called the culprit if just if, if I just come in sooner. Nikita's eyes dart every which way as he's, as he's trying to spin his tail. My god, tell me he's hiding something. Duh! Let's press him over details. Uh, about the storage room key first. The storage room was locked, right? Yeah, so I unlocked it. Since I'm on patrol, I have the keys with me. Is it easy to borrow the keys? <laughs> Not at all. Who knows what those delinquents would do if they had these keys? You just ruin your uh, your entire case, dude. Only trustworthy students like me, someone in the disciplinary committee, would be able to borrow the keys. Uh huh. You saw someone coming out of the room, right? What did they look like? A delinquent boy with brown hair. He was running at full speed, so I couldn't get a good look at his face. Why didn't you chase him? I didn't know what I should do. At the time, I had no idea he'd been poking around in the storage room. He's lying like a motherfucker, and I'm just like, sweetie, honey, darling, like, why are you even trying? Honey, why are you even trying? <laughs> Ask about the science room. Is there anything missing from the science room? Uh, I don't think so, but I'm not totally sure since I don't often come here. My apologies. Do you check if there were any shadows? Someone might be hiding in there. I checked over the room, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. That's why I decided to enter the storage room. Dude, your story is so fake. That's all I need to hear from Kakuda. Of the three pieces of information he gave me, two of them are inconsistent. He may give himself away if we point it out. Let's put his feet to the fire, shall we? The delinquent and the key. You said you saw the delinquent student, right? Yes, that's right. You said it was locked when you came in, which means the perpetrator locked it behind himself. You also said the key is under tight control, and that it never be lent out to untrustworthy delinquent students. Just wondering if you could explain that for me. That's the face of someone who's gonna have an ace attorney moment. Um, humans have stolen the spare keys. Those delinquents, they have no shame. What else is this guy cap capable of? Well, I suppose we can always go check if the spare keys have been stolen or not. Except I got an alternate theory. Kakuta, you broke into the room using the key you're holding. Uh I have no idea why you did that, but you started acting weird after I showed this to you. Yeah. Do you know anything about these mushrooms? I, I don't really know the details. I was just told to do this. By who? Uh, that's... The sound of a phone vibrating echoes in the room. Uh, is it your phone? Kenuta takes out his phone. He then stares at the screen, eyes wide with intense concentration. Oh. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else I'll be killed. Killed? Who told you they're going to kill you? I'm a detective, you can tell me. Mm. Mink. Ah! Run away! The Kuta runs out of the storage room, screaming at the top of his lungs. Wait! <laughs> I dashed after the Kuda with Mashita following hot on my heels. When I saw him running away like that, my money immediately flashed back to Naomi Horikoshi, who ran away from us right before she met a tragic fate. I'm determined to prevent history from repeating itself. I mean, to be fair, Naomi was happy dying, so... Different case. But my stamina fails me midway through the chase, and Kakuta disappears into the distance. That's what happens when you're middle age and don't take care of your health. Mashita immediately standing beside... Yashiki? Have you been eating properly? No. This is what happens when you don't eat properly. God! And then you complain about my smoking. Ugh, the heck is with that sprout stamina? 
We never even gained ground on him. He's some kind of monster. I agree with Mashita. I also agree with him on the fact that I'm not eating very well and he smokes too much. His physical prowess certainly seems like it's beyond that of a typical high school student. Almost as if he's being, he's being possessed by his spirit. Fine then, let's go back to the science room. I'm curious what Kakuda was trying to do. Y yeah. Let's see. Return to the science room storage room's room. My whole body feels as heavy as lead, both physically from fatigue and mentally from the looming sense of powerlessness. I'm starting to feel like I'm prey stuck on a spider's web, struggling pointlessly while the departed exerts total control over me. The fact that I said spider's web is totally not gonna be foreshadowing for something later. Totally not foreshadowing, I promise. Does this struggle have any purpose? Can I even save a single person? Ugh, don't give me that hang dog look. Just focus on moving the investigation forward and don't think about anything else. If you can handle that, then hit the road, Jack. My name is not Jack, shut up. Hero and I can handle the rest. No, I'm fine. Thank you for worrying about me, my boyfriend. Mashita is right. We need to act, not mope. Let's inspect the storage room. We need to figure out why I could have broke into this place. Let's see. Hmm. There's a large spiral shell fossil inside the shell. Is that an ammonite? Its distinctive shape looks pretty artistic for something natural. Okay, nothing on this side. Bear. This is a fine stuff bear. Wait, is stuff? It's not just. Like. Arb? Damn. It's not uncommon for schools to have stuffed animals, but a stuffed bear? That's unusual. I'm drawn to it. I see something glowing in its mouth. Is it really an eerie tooth there? I put my hand into the mouth, though I can't fit it all the way inside. What in the world are you doing? Oh, I'm. Uh, there's something inside, but I can't reach it in my hand, doesn't fit. Well, then I won't be able to do it either. We need to find someone with slimmer hands or just rip this bear open. Don't do that. If you do something like that there. like that here, you'll definitely call unwanted attention to us. Mashita and I are going to be able to get the object out. We need someone with slender hands to get it out. E Whoa! I'm gonna need you later. I'm getting the job move for some reason. Then I was rummaging through this shelf until a bit ago. The door's wide open and the documents are all scattered. And these are documents, let's see. There are several documents on the floor. This must be Kakuta's doing. I picked up one of the documents and look at the cover. There's a label with a caption written on it. Research on native native plants that grow around Konohara Academy. Oh, there are two dates written in the title, one from 11 years ago and another from 9 years ago. It is research span two years. I find a preface on the next page. The fox forest behind the school seems to have a special environment. A variety of plants native to, to the area can be seen here. As a science teacher at Konohara Academy, I set out to catalog all of them. Following the preface page, there's a summary of the research done on various plants. There are photos of plants and moss, complete with detailed research information. It's thorough, yet a surprisingly easy read. It's clear that the author is both a fine writer and educator. What in the... The page between Fox Acelia and Foxtail Fern has been turned out. I skim through the end, through to the end, but I don't find anything about the red mushrooms. Just taking a crazy shot in the dark here, but let me guess, the mushrooms infos on the turn page. Most likely. The Kutas must have done this. I bet it's why he's snuck in here. Why did he do that, Yashiki? He trespassed into a locked schoolroom and stole something. He'd probably be spelled if he got caught. 
was some information on mushrooms really worth that much risk. I guess he thought it was, and can't even imagine what information would be that important though. If we can find that lost page, we may get a step closer to understanding Kakuda's motives. Should we report him to the school, Yashiki? No, we shouldn't. We'd be with the Kakuda into a corner if we did. We can always decide to turn him in later once we've heard his side of the story. Well then... Let's go back to the infirmary for a moment. Whoa. I need you for reasons. Ah, Mr. Yashiki, finally! Oh. Kabe showed, showed up earlier and left me a message. Seekers of wisdom, I shall await you in the Garden of Knowledge. What does that even mean? Don't ask me, I got no clue either. Well, that's all. See you later. I'm not gonna go check on the goddamn Chuni fanboy. Having finished her business with us, Michiho strolls off. Let's go to the new building first. Kira's gonna help me with that little, um... With that little bear issue. And then, afterwards, I'm gonna go get back to Mashita. And then we're gonna attack a fanboy. No, not like that. What was that about attacking a fanboy? Not like that! Mm -hmm. A fine stuff bear. Yeah, yeah, the back of his mouth. Why are you staring at the stuff bear, Yashiki? Oh, well, there's something inside, but my hands are too big to fit all the way in. Do you want me to give it a try then? I didn't mean it that way, but. Would you mind trying it for me? To be honest, I don't really want to do it. Since it looks like there'll be weird bugs in there. But I guess I have no choice, huh? Thanks, Hiro. Hiro timidly puts her hand into the bear's mouth with a gloomy expression on her face. Uh, just a little bit more. Nice, I got it. Here you go. Do. Tooth. Tooth. Eat tooth. Thanks, Hiro. Okay, now one eat tooth. And now I'll return to the infirmary to get back to my uh, fanboy. I mean, to Mashita, who will come to me uh, to deal with the fanboy. Mashita is a fanboy we need to meet in the library. There's no one inside the library. Why wouldn't they be at the library? It's a garden of knowledge! Or so I thought. After a beat, a boy suddenly emerges from behind the bookshelves. Welcome to the garden of knowledge, Mr. Yashiki. Who the fuck is that? This is my boyfriend. Oh. Seeing that you're here, that must mean you're in need of assistance from the sage, aka me. You're the one who called me here. Goodness, so you haven't realized it yet. My left eye said you wanted my wisdom. And so I told you where I was in advance. Because it is my being generous and proactively providing you service. I can't follow his line of thinking at all. One thing for certain, he's being nice to me today. Maybe he's in a good mood or something. There's a good chance to get some information out of him. Let's play along. I didn't realize that your clairvoyance let you see so far ahead. You really are incredible. This is totally not me being sarcastic. Just as you mentioned, there was something I wanted to ask you. That's right. Ask away. I'm listening. You seem to be in a good mood today. What's got you feeling so upbeat? Fine perception. I expected no less from the one and only spirit doctor. I will be meeting my mentor for the first time in a while today. So they're the reason you turn out this way. I mean, are they the person who got you interested in paranormal phenomena? Correct. My great master taught me the truth of the world. They, tra they, they made me the man I am today. The reason why Abe has developed such an interesting personality. 
they just warp his mind and completely ruin a kid's life. You hate to see it. I can't believe... I can't believe Yashiki literally says he hates to see it. <laughs> Don't know what... Yashiki sees this, you hate to see it. Yashiki when Mashita appears, you love to see it. Please wait, Mr. Yashiki. I shall share information regarding the departed case uh, case on one condition. The condition being, you must complete my trial. W what trial? I want to see your true abilities as a spirit, Doctor. Be it your spiritual state or power, show me everything. You see with my investigation, though. And my boyfriend, who just came back, I miss him so much. It'll take for a moment of your time. Are you ready? I guess, okay. Now allow me to explain the trial. I have three talismans with me. Pick them and get a good look. Obtain our talismans. Each talisman has a symbol on it. Triangle, square or star. I am going to envision one symbol in my head. I'm sure you already know what you should do, right? You merely need to read my mind with your supernatural powers. And stick the symbol I'm picturing. Uh, what a silly game. <laughs> the prodding of outsiders is not necessary for this trial. This is my trial for Mr. Yachiki. Yeah, and that's my boyfriend that you're trialing for some reason, and I don't like you. Fucking fanboys. But, but I'm not a psychic, let alone someone with supernatural powers. I mean, maybe the second, but not the first. Humbling yourself, I see. I have selected a symbol. Now demonstrate your powers to me. Have a start mumbling something as if he's meditating. Why is it? What? What? Taiman is what they call a pentagram in divination, which would be a star. But he might be trying to throw me off, and the correct answer could be triangle or square. Do I need to give a correct answer though? Actually, does it get better with Mashita around? A little bit. Mashita, let's show him the Petri dish. What if I try to open in the lid of the Petri dish to see the inside? Come on, succeed. I wanted to succeed. Yes! Thank you, it's some percentages. The hideous centipede shows up the moment I open the lid. I'm pretty sure I was terrified of bugs, Mashita. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Chiki, why don't you give the little brat a look at what's inside the dish? I present the pretty dish to Abe, making sure he gets a good look at the centipede inside. I love that much. The dish is like, yeah, this is gonna be fun. He's having the witch one. I love my boyfriend. He's such a dick. Huh? Ah! Centipede! <laughs> from me, please. Are you going to give me your information then? You underhand the scandal! This is not fair! There's a lesson for you. Never underestimate the craftiness of adults, you brat. What will you do now? Fine, I lose! Get the petrish away from me now! Looks like this is the right choice! I, I love being a dick. I love being a dick. That was great. I've learned a lot. So this is how you exterminate spirits. You observe them and then strike at their weaknesses. How oh, incredible, spirit doctor. I fulfill my end of the bargain, Abe. I am for you to spill everything you know. Understood. I let him know that a new notice has arrived and ask him about Mr. Kukuri. So this time it's Mr. Kukuri, huh? I know him, obviously. The spirit that haunts the shrine in the second floor, connecting uh, in the second floor connecting corridor, as well as the fox forest, is it not? Forest? That's news to me. Goodness me, the spirit doctor didn't even know that trivial bit of information. I guess you leave me no choice. More information then? 
Allow me to tell you the rumors I have learned. This was a well-known rumor that spread around 10 years ago. There's an old shrine gate in the north corner of the school grounds. Beyond that gate lies a path leading to the forest. It's said he appears there at night. My cold spirits, of course. Onyoki has a gun! The most dangerous weapon. A man clad in white garb and a fox mask. He's Mr. Kakuri. Was dubbed Kokuri because of the mask, as I'm sure you know, the ritual used to speak with the dead, Kokuri was a part fox spirit. I believe he was given the name by someone who knew he was a fox spirit. It said Mr. Kokuri used to be a priest of the shrine in the forest. In his past life, he patrolled the path and performed ritual cleansings to keep the shrine free of negative energy. To continue this routine even after death, he will never forgive anyone who disgraces a shrine. If you find one, I blew it. Yeah, like that. I blew it. He will shoot the scoundrel right in the head. That is a Mr. Kukuri I know. Interesting, because it's not like the one we know of. No mention of the mushrooms, no, like. That's weird. <laughs> like there were mushrooms in that scene, but no mention of the four, you know, getting mushrooms attached to your body and stuff. Thank you for allowing me to impart my wisdom. That's different from the rumor I heard. There are two rumors on Mr. Kukuri after all. The Fox Forest rumor predates the one about the second floor shrine. Makes sense. Perhaps details have changed over time throughout the retelling of the rumor. Or, what if our rumors are actually true, and know the details have changed at all? What if Mr. Kukuri actually shows up in both the forest and the corridor? Interesting. Unfortunately, the Mr. Kukuri of the corridor is completely different from the one in the forest, in terms of the period, place, and the curses they wield. Do you still think they are the same? Hmm, they could be different spirits. But there's no way to know, really, because one is from 10 years ago, so most of the people here probably don't know anything. I'll say either way. Huh, you are being cautious with your theories. I wonder if that is how you managed to survive. What do you think, Abe? I have no idea. A definite conclusion would require more information. Should we assume both rumors are true, though? That means the two spirits are connected. Is there anything that leads you to that conclusion? More or less, the priest that became Mr. Kukuri is said to have traveled the forest path in his past life. That path connects to shrines, uh, connected to shrines. The first one is a shrine in the forest, and the other one is Kukuri Shrine on the second floor. You see, that shrine was originally on the ground. Kukuri appears in both shrines because they are connected. Is that what you think? Precisely. Okay, that makes more than sense. Two shrines and two rumors related to Kukuri. What could this mean? I don't know. Hooligan, huh? A person who's a far cry from the upstanding citizen I am. Funny, you're a fanboy. I'm a chilly one of them. I have the faintest idea who that might be. The delinquent girl? Describe the girl who attacked me and ask if he knows her. I am not familiar with such an individual. My left eye refuses to see, even see those of low spiritual state. Dick. What the chuny fanboy, I swear to god. Give me Petri dish. I think they give me Petri dish out and show it to Abe again. That's not being happening so much. I quickly return the Petri dish to my bag in light of Abe's feelings. Yeah, he's a chuny. Piece of shit. After I finish talking with, Ab talking with Abe, I leave the library. Mashita's phone is vibrating. Who the heck's calling me? Dude, it's probably Hiro. Mashita answers the phone and begins to speak. Based on the part of the conversation I overhear, I assume the caller's Hiro. 
government draws. Nice to see the government draws and having a good time. Hero said that Brad's awake. She said it's too much for me to handle. Please return ASA ASAP. Shall we head to the infirmary? It's almost time for students to leave school anyway. You the talking, yeah, Shiki. Tina, so you're like teacher here now. I'm not super confident, but I'll give it a shot. I'm possibly getting two more. Two more drones? Drones do you need? Like, I'm sorry, that sounds like a lot of drones. That's way too many government drones. I find the delinquent girl glaring at Hiro, who is clearly frustrated and frustrated when I arrive at the infirmary. Thank the heaven you're finally back. I tried to explain what happened to her. Hi. But she didn't even respond. I don't know what to do with her. Please do something, Yashiki. So this situation falls to me. Once I'm all ready, I should talk to the delinquent girl. Uh, let's save. Mm. Okay, let's talk. After taking a deep breath and organizing my thoughts, I approach the girl and talk to her. Glad to see you regain consciousness. Your name's Saki Maruhashi, right? The name's Yashiki. I'm a temporary teacher here. Have you heard anything about me? I'm currently investigating the part of this case. How do I put this? Do you remember attacking me with a baton? This isn't going well, she's not answering at all. Chime sounds, signaling the closing of school for the day. I'm going. Maruhashi starts walking toward the exit. Wait! There's something I want to ask you! At that moment, someone else enters the infirmary. Yes, Ruoka is back! Also, her tone of voice sounds deeper than in the first game. Are they lucky confirming that she's trans? Because I always assumed. Like, just her general, like, look and style and everything always gave me, like, old, old mama vibes, you know what I mean? Good afternoon. It is quite lively here, isn't it? Yasuoka? Mm-hmm. My, it's been a while since we last saw each other. The beginning kimono-clad woman is to work with Yasuoka. She's another Margaret and also an unfortunate teller. She's not quite famous as a spiritualist and has helped me a lot. I'm biased towards the voices. The voices are good. Sadly, I don't have one of those myself. The sacred objects Moe brought to the school are actually hers. What brings you here? I am here to help you out, obviously. Aemon and Moe have been keeping me informed about your case. I see you've gone and gotten yourself wrapped up in another terrifying incident. And knowing you, I suppose the wheels of fate must be turning once again. No one can escape the fate they were born with. I'm curious to see what twists and turns a strange fate of yours will take you down. Perhaps a Yasuoka's age has given her this philosophical perspective on life. However, she is certainly not cold-hearted. If she were, she wouldn't bother lending a hand to people who face a daunting fate. By the way, who is this girl? Perhaps she stares at Yasuoka. It's a far different look from, than the glare she directed at us earlier. It's not a trace of her prior hostility. Um, you're too happy I saw a car and you. You're an OMG paranormal experience. Yes, that is I. Whoa, you see, it's a legendary celebrity here. Shit, shit, shit. I'm like super nervous now. Was we at 180? Or has she went from high school to totally excited? She seems overjoyed to meet someone that she's seen on television. Your raw energy is out of this world, Miss Yasuoka. You're so freaking refreshing! My, my, thank you, dear. You are also very beautiful. That hair color suits you well. You think so? 
Um, Mizia Suka, can I get your autograph? After that, I asked Yasuoka to help me persuade Maruhashi to talk. Because of that, she reluctantly agrees to cooperate with us. I'm only doing this because Miss Yasuoka asked me. I don't like you. So what do you want to know? Let's go Maruhashi. Oh, you want to get to know me? Saki Maruhashi from 1B. My favorite subjects are math and art. My favorite food is sweet red bean buns. And I love looking at motorcycles. Yes, I am related to that guy from the second game. Just looking at them, not writing. Yeah, I don't have a license. I'm underage, idiot. I really love the plating and gold glitter paint on vintage motorcycles. My cousin's the leader of a biker gang. And then she's gonna join the Yakuza. And then he's gonna die. Just so you know. He's got this red chicken on the cow of his bike and it just looks so cool. Once Maruhashi starts excitedly talking about motorcycle detailing, she looks like any other enthusiastic kid. I heard that you're often hanging out by yourself. I can't help that, you know? There's no one in the school that I can talk to about art. And I get bored talking with him about other stuff. Okay. Ask about Mr. Kukuri rumors? Do you know anything about Mr. Kukuri? Nope, never heard of him before. Who is he anyway? That's a pretty strange name. He's a spirit that haunts the second floor corridor. Ah, you for real! I would have never gone there if I'd known it's stupid to mess around with spirits. Does that spirit show up the, from the shire? From the shrine? It's also said he appears in, fo in the fox forest. Not the fox forest! That place sure is bad news, huh? I heard weird stories about it. What kind of stories? Are they about spirits or...? Nah, not those kinds of stories. I heard punks used to sneak into the forest a long time ago. I don't know if it's real or not, but apparently some of them never come back. Punks in the forest at night, huh? What a strange combination. Don't ask me why, I've got no idea. But none of the students have ever gone near that forest because of that rumor. Okay, and what do you attack this bitch? I'm sorry, I shouldn't call you a bitch. You're nuts. I don't remember. It's like there's a blank spot in my memory or some shit. How much do you remember then? Hmm. I remember going to the corridor after school. I know that place is like off limits, but I like hanging out there, you know? It's empty and the wind feels really nice. I was just pacing out while looking at the sky. But then I got this strange feeling. <laughs> I got goosebumps, I started freaking out. And it all came from that shrine, so I approached it. And I opened the door. I found a disgusting petri dish inside. I thought it was just a horrible prank, so I went to grab it. And my memory got wiped after that. I don't even remember attacking you or being carried to the infirmary or anything. That's all. So you're not the one who put the dish there? Of course not! My grabs is a chief priest of Kitoki Shrine! Ever since I was a kid, I had a fear of the gods really into my skull. You think I do such a blasphemous shit? Hell no! In her pale her faces, I don't think she's lying. Who put the petri dish there then? I've asked her everything I can think of. Is Saki Maruhashi really the hooligan that Mr. Kuk Mr. Kukuri is targeting? I share my doubts with the mind bearers and ask for their opinion. Mm, I don't know. Neither the law of matter conservation nor including geometry apply to spiritual beings, so it's not like you can apply logic here. I don't know about her being the target hooligan, but she's definitely a delinquent. I'm thinking the same thing. Okay, oh hi, this spiritual stuff is kind of your whole thing now? Give us your take. Let's see. Maruhashi doesn't strike me as a malicious person. And if she were truly the target, she would she should have been slain in front of the shrine. Instead, the spirit only chose to drive her mad. In my opinion, I am doubtful that she's your hooligan. Well, who is hooligan then? Well, 
We do know one person who committed a crime two seconds ago before we found ourselves in this situation. Even after discussing the matter further, we failed to arrive at a convincing answer to this mystery. That means we're still lacking information. We have no choice but to keep investigating the subject. Which means that our next destination will be the place Abe mentioned earlier. The fox forest behind the school. That is where Hooligan has been added to the spirit file. A few days after the incident at the clock tower, a new notice arrived. This time, the murderer is a spirit named Kukuri, and the target is Hooligan. A rumor is also circulating about Mr. Kukuri. They say he is the spirit of a priest that holds the corridor shrine and punishes delinquents. From our hatchet, hooligans who desecrate the shrine will be cursed by Mr. Kukuri and mushrooms will grow on their faces. When we went to investigate, we were attacked by a victim of the curse, a student named Maruhashi. She fits the description of a hooligan, but is she the target? We managed to get information on Mr. Kukuri, a spirit who hunts the fox forest behind the school, through a student named Abe, who is also a fucking chuni and a fanboy. The two Mr. Kukuri rumors are different, but they share one aspect, a male priest. Are they really targeted by Ruhashi? If not, then who is Hooligan? Well then... By the time we finish our discussion, the sun has pretty much set. The night phase of our investigation is about to begin. Either Hiro or Mashita will accompany me for the night, the other will stay here. I'll be managing the sacred objects in my stead tonight. Come to me whenever you've gathered enough lost souls. You're going to help us out, Yashuka? But of course, I have far more knowledge about the spirit world than you lot. I should be able to use that knowledge to assist you somehow. Experience is the best teacher, after all. It's dangerous, though. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. But I've already lived a long, full life. I don't really value my life as much as I used to. I'd rather not see anyone younger than me die, though. So please allow me to be of service, Yashiki. You're going to live for like 200 years at, that, at this point. And that's for the best. We we'll, we'll love, we we'll love a hug. Alright. Seeing that we are dealing with spirits here, I'm grateful to have an expert with us. Still, I can't have her walking around the forest in that beautiful kimono. I'll just have her stay here. You would better stay here too, Maruhashi. At least until we've got a clear answer who Hooligan is. Sure, I don't mind. I can't just ask Michelle to look at to give me life advice. Life advice, you're too young for that. <laughs> Everyone has their own problems, you know? It doesn't matter how old they are, even my own grandchild. Are we gonna... Are we gonna meet Yasuoka's grandchild? Yasuoka has grandchildren? Oh god, Yasuoka has grandchildren. I need to know who, who, who her grandchild is. Yasuoka, you're gonna, you're gonna have to let me meet your grandchild. I, I need to meet them. And just like that, the three women quickly become immersed in their chit-chat. As I look at them... Hey, hey Ashiki. Hey Ashiki. Hey Ashiki. Hey Ashiki. Yeah? Bitch. God damn it! Mashita approaches me. Boy, friends. Take this, Yashiki. He hands over a paper bag. There's something heavy inside. I run my fingers along the paper bag. It seems to be made of metal and has a rectangular section leading to a more rounded section. What? Is it a gun? Mashita, this is... Lower your voice, idiot. Do you want the others to find out? But I don't know how to use one of these. Don't you remember the first game that I had to make you use the gun because I didn't know how the fuck to use them? Relax, this one doesn't have a safety. Just aim and pull the trigger. Still, because it doesn't have a safety, be very careful with it and don't cause it to go off by accident. You give this kind of thing to civilians. It's for your own safety. We have no idea what we could be dealing with. And if something happens to me, you'll be glad you have it. Don't hesitate to use it when needed. You hear me? Okay. Thanks, boyfriend. You know they love each other because he just gave me a suspicious paper bag with a gun. Obtain suspicious paper bag. What are you two doing? Making out. Yeah, we're totally making out. 
Nothing, just making out. If we're all set, then let's go. On, let's get on with this investigation. The Foxworth is located in the northern corner of the school, just beyond the Shrine Gate. To get to the Shrine Gate, take the road in front of the clock tower. I hope we find something. Maybe Kakuta will be there. We haven't seen him since he ran off. I have no idea where he went, though. Sorry to say, but there's nothing we can do about it. I recall Kakuta's parting words to us. I was summoned. I have to go, or else I'll be killed. MK. MK Ultra. Is the US government all over again? Who called Kakuta? And for what reason? By the way, Ashiki. Hey, isn't Nakamatsu a Kujo Manjun? Why don't you give him a call? Ita may be able to research the background details of this case on the internet. While well, I'm still not sure I should involve him in this, we're in dire need of information now. If I have any questions, I should call him. The characters Hak Saki Murahashi and Tuwaku Yasuoka have been added to the character file. Well, then, then let's, um, I'm gonna take an intervention in a second, but let's trade and get some stuff done first. That reminds me, I brought new sacred objects! Wait for sacred objects. Oh, now they're more expensive, okay. Ramasa War 3 Lost Souls. 3 damage from suspects evangelical events. Uh, I'd rather have the percentage one first. The Black Madonna, I'm guessing it is. Yeah. Increase success rate during suspensive x-ray 20% And that will replace the Ganesha And then we'll get this one Reduce action cost, yeah that's gonna be useful The, the damage is the, the least of my problems, it's usually not that bad And we are at uh, seven lost souls in this chapter. Are you sure she's trans? Like, I know that maybe she's just a woman with a very deep voice, but the sprite from her from the first game always gave me that feeling. Like, she's absolutely flat as all hell. As, as she's shown in, in that sprite. She just has like that you know, that that kind of like look to her, like the makeup and everything. She just gives me that vibe. So let's see. Yeah, we're fine. And let's talk to Eita. Call Eita. Just to see if he can get me some information. Then we'll save and then we'll take an intermission so I can get myself some coffee. I pick up the phone in the infirmary and punch in the mansion's number. Hey, Eita. Hey, Eita. Hey, Eita. Hey, Eita. Yeah? Hi. Nakamatsu here. It's me, Yashiki. I need you to look up a few things for me. Sure, alright. Tell me what you need me to find. I share details of the incident to Eita. You just keep running into spirits one after the other, huh? There is a way, there is way too much evil stuff to rise in the school, man. If I was the role there, I would have just taken off running and never looked back. So what do you want to ask? Thanks for this afternoon, Yashiki. What are you talking about? Damn, you forgot already, you have me cheer Susu up. Oh, yeah, back at the hospital. I only did that because you encouraged me. Nah, you mean a lot to her, you know? She really believes in you. Everyone really depends on you, I'm jealous. Uh, it's no big deal. Oh, come on, no need to be so humble, man. Makes me wonder if I'll be as impressive as you are when I reach your age. I wonder. It all depends on your effort level, I guess. Do your best. You've still got plenty of time to become the man you want. Yeah, I'll give it my best shot. Okay, let's go stop it. Kukuri? Mr. Kukuri, huh? Never heard of him. I knew it, no heads. Maybe he's a minor spirit that's only known at Konohihara Academy. Hooligans? A lot of hooligans show up when I search. Can you try and narrow it down a bit? Like, give me a first or last day or something. Who in the world is hooligan? 
Well, we still don't have a confirmation. We do have a suspect. Find me any information about Shinichi Kakuta. Shinichi Kakuta from Konohara Academy, huh? You got it. That Kakuta kick seems to be famous in the karate world. He performed well in several tournaments and has a promising future. Man, I'm getting kind of jealous. This a post that caught my attention. What post? It's a common thread on the article. With the obvious caveat of never trusting any unsourced comments you can find on the internet, this Kakuta kid supposedly punched a student from another school and injured them. That could be a clear-cut case of criminal assault. The thread continues on. Despite the incident, he still took part in the tournament afterward. He should have at least gotten a house arrest if something like that was true. I wonder what's going on. That's suspicious. No more say he's senior at Konoe Hara Academy alumnus cover of the incident. If that's true, Kakuta's probably pretty indebted to him. If this rumors about Kakuta are true, then the fine of Sunday student on the disciplinary committee actually has two faces. How would that be related to this case though? Well, that would definitely make him a hooligan. Maybe Petrovich. But mushrooms growing out of a dead centipede? Yeah, you saying that makes me feel gross. Glad I don't have to see the real thing. That seems to be everything with Eita. Talk to you later! Bye Eita, thanks for the help. Okay, let's save. And let's change uh, screens, which sadly requires me stopping the music for a second because... Bullshit. There we go. And... I'll come back in a sec with more water. And my back stretch and some coffee. And then we'll continue. So I'll I'll return in a sec.
Okay, I'm back. Um, let's change screens again. There we go. And now we can continue. We can continue investigating. Okay, let's check the rooms here first. Just in case. There's no one in the student council room. By the way, aren't you friendly with the student council kids? Yes, oddly enough, and against my better judgment. <coughs> You're really popular with Brad, suit, even though you're this unfriendly. Don't get too carried away and try anything stupid. It'll be too late if something happens. Don't oh, say that out loud! Having Sakamoto projecting that image onto me is enough as it is. Are you jealous? Yes. Yes, I'm jealous. Shut the fuck up. There's no need to stay here any longer. Mashita, she's gonna look at me like that for the rest of the day. Which is very attractive, but also... Better not. There's no one in the faculty room as well. Well, that's the problem. What a neat classroom. Is it different from when you were in school? Garbage was always piled up on the teacher's desk, and the walls were yellow from cigarette smoke. Though that didn't change even after I joined the force and became a detective. It's like I'm destined to be stuck in a sty stain by cigarettes. It's still the same then. Yep, you'll see once you come to my office. There's no need to stay here any longer, okay. Why don't you invite me to your office more often, Magda? God, I'm your boyfriend. Well, your house is prettier. There's no one in the library. Uh, this is a nice library, one that really lives up to this school's reputation. Magda, for your information, no lighting fires in here. Think of me. I'm not so crazy that I need to be given lessons in the quorum by an insane man who lives in some weird ass mansion. Man, why do you insult me like that? The governments are being kicked out of the patio. <laughs> Damn. It's government rules. I know that I could just go to the clock tower, but this is funnier for me. I get to make Mashita run. Oh. Oh no, it's the pot again. Hooligan gone to Fox Forest. It creates some devil to see invisible Kukuri. Uh, again? What's wrong, Yashiki? No, it's nothing. It has gotta be the work of that female doll again. She wanted to tell me something. Hooligan has gone to the fox forest. It creates some devil to see the invisible Kukuri. If the previous pattern holds, this information must have something to do with the spirit. I have no idea what that doll's goal is, but it doesn't hurt to keep that information in mind. High differences are very good. And people who think otherwise uh, don't get it. Right in front of it. Oh, this is the shrine, huh? We arrive at the north end of the school grounds. The shrine gate we see before us must be the entrance to the fox forest. Is there anything on the other side? Doesn't seem like it. No shrine gate. It looks real despite the dull color. Beyond the gate is a dense, gloomy forest. This place is really suspicious. I feel like a demon or a snake is about to lurch out. I mean, remember the last time we were in a freaky forest, Maj Maj Majita? Because I mm -hmm. remember. Majita. 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 Remember when we dealt with the jazz? Majita, remember the jazz? I remember the jazz, Majita. There was so much jazz in that forest. A traffic cone and barrier are blocking the way. I imagine they're there to prevent people from going in. 
However, this might have the opposite effect. They're quite attention grabbing and it's not difficult to bypass the barrier. We could have at least put some more effort into it. The fox forest is just up ahead. From the shrine gate, an overgrown path continues deeper into the forest. This should be the path Ava mentioned. The path that connects the Kukuri Shrine, former location, and at the school with the shrine in the forest. Mr. Kukuri uses this path to go back and forth between the two shrines. Are these tiny ass cones actually intended to close the road? What a joke. The path ahead is unknown territory. Start sha say sharp, Mashita. Yeah, you better, not, you better not let your guard down either. Boy, friends. On a date in a spooky forest. We delve deeper into the pitch black forest. As we press forward, the light from the flashlight illuminates more and more trees crowding in around us. But I'm so riled up that the shadowy forms look like a horde of monsters to me. Who knows, maybe a real monster is poised to strike just beyond the imagined monsters I'm seeing. As my mind starts down that train of thought, my skin starts to crawl, and getting in my own head and making myself paranoid. New area! Before long we arrive at an old path leading to the shrine. Although it's only a few minutes from the gate, I feel like we've entered another world. Finding a spirit in a forest at night, huh? Reminds me of the mess we were in four months ago. He remembers the shas! Yeah, we were with Sho and Christy back then. Christy Arimura is one of the magwares and a former newscaster. If the news that arrived at Christian Mansion a few days ago are true, she's currently overseas covering a story. Speaking of Narashima, did he ignore your warning and try getting himself involved in this case? It shoot his ass out. He should stay out of your hair for a while. Okay. Thank you, Mashita. And here I thought Sho withdrew from the case on his own accord. I don't know what exactly Mashita told him, and I don't want to ask. Best to just leave that stone unturned. Don't know how long that brat be able to endure it. It's time for the adults to put an end to this thing. Well then. Oh hey, it's you. Is that Kakura? Literally it's just Kakura. Hi. Hey Kakura. Why are you here? This. This is the end. What end? Like, like the start of that um, that song, you know, from from Skyfall, the, the movie Skyfall. I didn't do him a favor. I shouldn't have gotten involved. Boxed. He's mumbling something to himself. His voice hoarse, as if his words are caught in the back of his throat. What the, in the hell happened, Kakura? <laughs> Mr. Yashiki, yes? I... I... Yeah? I don't wanna die. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Oh. Oh, ooh, ah, ooh, oh, ooh, that's some... Um... Yeah, that's... yeah. That's some... Um... Oh, oh, I keep looking at it and it's just worse every time I look at it, oh. His, his face bulges from within, red lies swelling across his skin as it's pulled apart. His expression contorts in agony as he screams. Mushrooms sprout from within his wounds, rooted somewhere inside his head. More and more mushrooms split his skin to pieces. What is happening to Akura's body? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd imagine it hurts. I mean, that looked pretty eldritch to me. Although it's mushrooms. Mushrooms are just naturally eldritch, if you ask me. Touching his face, Kakura runs away while screaming. His figure disappears into the woods. Could that be Mr. Kakuri's curse? I'm immediately reminded of the rumors of a delinquent boy whose ear turned into mushrooms. What's happening to Kakura is even more horrific than the rumors. For fuck's sake, ow! 
What a bracket curse! I think we know the answer to that. He's cursed because of his hooligan. What the fuck did he do? Well, I'm gonna assume something big. I don't know, but Kakuda seems to have an idea why he got cursed. If we do what if we do whatever he did, we'll be cursed too. Ugh. We don't know what action provokes Mr. Kukuri's ire, which means we need to be extremely careful in this forest. Me immediately stops being careful. A cluster of mushrooms is growing in a tree trunk. I hear something. It sounds like a human groaning. Is there something in the darkness? Expect the darkness? Sure. I wave my flashlight toward the direction of the groan. Nearby trees are illuminated by the light. But it's still too dark to see anything else. They stare into the darkness, trying to get a better look. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, that was freaky. What was that? His eyes. His eyes are looking at us. Is this spiritual phenomenon tied to Kokuri, or did other spirits in this forest do it? It could be anything. It could even be ghosts. It is literally ghosts, but it could be a a a, a bunch of ghosts. I don't really know. Well then, at that moment, I feel something strange at the bottom of my foot. It feels like I'm stepping on something small and hard. Tooth. I raise my foot and pick up the item. Tooth. Yeah, it's a new tooth. We need six more. And then... Hmm. It's an old stone lantern. An animal carved atop of the lantern. It looks like a mouse to me. Do these animals mean anything? I'm getting curious now. I'm gonna look it up. Spec. The stone is quite weather, so these things are quite old. Its surface is mostly covered in moss and mushrooms. Um, I don't think I can do anything with that for now. Cool. This is the next one. It's a long stone lantern. There's an animal carved over the lantern. It looks like a cow to me. Ah, uh, the stone is quite weather. Okay. Moss and mushrooms. Okay, there must be four. So, mouse, cow, and this is... Uh, smash the piece. Yes. There's an old sun lantern. There's an animal carved over the lantern. It looks like a tiger to me. Mouse, cow, and tiger. Cuckoo. There's an old sun lantern. It looks like a rabbit to me. Mouse, cow. Tiger, rabbit. Another. How many of these mm -hmm. there are? Uh, looks like a dragon. Mouse, cow, tiger. Wait, I I already forgot. Mouse, cow. Tiger, rabbit, dragon. <sighs> Wait, is that is that the Chinese zodiac and the and the cow is the bull? Is, is that what it is? Cool. Where are you gonna be now? Is that a snake? Yeah, it's the fucking zodiac. Okay. Cool. A snake, a horse. The next one is probably gonna be a fucking monkey. Yes. I say being from the year of a uh, year of the monkey. A sheep. Well, sheep, ram, I guess. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the monkey. Yeah, it's it's, it's the Chinese. I haven't mm -hmm. seen. 
It's an old stone lantern. There's an animal covered to the lantern. It looks like a rooster. Wait. Um, hi! It's an old stone lantern. It's an animal covered to the lantern. It looks like a dog to me. Um, hi. Okay, then. I hope you don't give me any questions regarding to this because I already forgot. Hi. What is that? You know, a ghost. We don't stand a ghost of a chance against it. I know, I know, that wasn't funny. I'm not trying to. A stooped figure is blocking our path. It's a man with mushrooms sprouting from his body. Or rather, it's more like a man who has become mushrooms. <laughs> I couldn't love you. Kinda looks like his uniform. Un unless he's a different student. He bellows a maddening roar, and I feel a thick haze constricting my consciousness. Oh, he left. Okay. Before I can react, I'm back on the path. Did this spirit do this? Probably. Fuck my head. It feels like someone took a jackhammer to my skull. What are we gonna do, Yashiki? As long as that mushroomy bastard is here, we can't go forward. We need to do something. It's an old sun lantern. Rabbit. Oh, we're back to the rabbit. Okay. Is he back at the end? Yeah, he is. This is extremely much for me. Like, let's see. This is extremely covered in mushrooms. This is less covered in mushrooms than, than the first one. That is also less covered in mushrooms than the next one. This is also less covered in mushrooms than this one, from what I can see. So they get more and more covered in mushrooms every time we get closer. Mm, I wonder, do we have to light them up? Is the first one clean? No, it still has mushrooms, just very little. Cuckoo. Okay, mouse. Oh, Yoshi. wait. That was a mistake. Um, can I light it up? No, I can't. Hmm. The one there. Which one's it that I'm dead? Rabbit one. I suspect the other ones that I haven't, just in case. Dragon. Oh! God damn. Keyboard, please! But sorry, there was one of those things with the keyboard. Hmm. God damn it. Okay, the snake one. He doesn't have. Oh, the snake one has something. Behind the stones, there seems to be an there seem to be animal tracks leading further into the woods, diverging from the path. The serpent path. Let's see if there are any other paths, cool. just in case. The horse. Okay, no path around the horse one. Cool. Uh, the sheep. No path there. Cool. Uh, monkey. Monkey. No path for the monkey. Cuckoo. There's a rooster path, okay. There seems to be an animal truck leading further into the woods. You're ready for the path. Rooster path. Mm -hmm. And the last one. The dog. Which I'm guessing doesn't have a path either. Okay. 
Start with the serpent one. Then. my way through the dense foliage, we walk further into the woods. Wonder how far this trail goes. But if we can't find our way back home, we'll be fine. That is an open area in front of us. Something's there. Um, I find a different path. I guess this is the back road. There's a large stone at the end of the path. What on earth is that supposed to be? Um, hi! Hmm. Freaky stone covering mushrooms. A huge stone is blocking the path. A thick shrine rope is wrapped around the stone. It looks like a serpent. I wonder what that means. Should I investigate it more closely? Yes! The rope looks like it is protecting this huge rock. There must be something behind it. Should I try touching the rope? This is a terrible idea, but yes. I take a step closer and touch the rope. <coughs> Ow. Suddenly a sharp chill runs down my spine. Is that supposed to be a warning or something? Uh, I'd better stop then. Well then. Let's go to the other one then. Let's go to the rooster. You should have that sort of little attention. Not when we're surrounded by mushrooms. That's a bad idea. Imagine if you get some mushrooms somewhere private. That sounds bad. Especially if you're not into mushrooms. We follow the animal truck. <coughs> oh god, sorry. I just... The coffee, I almost choked on it. Follow the animal tracks surrounded by overground flora once again. I wonder what's waiting for me in this deep dark forest. Horrors. The creeps, even. That... some an open area in front of us. Something's there. We arrive at a small meadow. There are some random things scattered on the ground here. Everything is all and unusable. You may as well call it junk. Perhaps this place used to be a garbage dump. Oh. Not a useless garbage dump, hopefully. Uh, let's see... Okay, you're the first thing to check. It's an old signboard on top of a broken trailer. It's a wooden signboard, the kind of thing used to serve as a notice board in olden times. These days you don't see them outside of period dramas. It's a brief sentence written in old-fashioned script. To the shrine, two bits for monkey, three bits for tiger, one bit for snake. Monkey, tiger, and two bits for monkey, three for tiger, and one for snake. Ugh, that's not making any sense to me. Here, teacher, and you, Yashiki, solve this one. Mashita immediately gives up. He's so stupid, I love him. Looks like I'm going to have to unravel this puzzle myself. Hmm, let's see. It starts out to the shrine, so maybe it's indicating a ritual one has to perform before visiting the shrine. Monkey, tiger, and snake are obviously referring to the Chinese zodiac signs. So what does beat mean? Clapping, probably? Clapping? Right, clapping your hands is a typical part of a shrine visit, so that seems to fit. So that means we have to clap our hands in a particular manner before going to the shrine. This is probably how people in the past showed respect to their to the gods living in the shrine. I jot down the contents of the board just in case. Not all signboard. Okay, let's see hmm. what's in here. An abandoned decaying drum. Its frame has gotten rusty after being exposed to the elements. What is this in the forest though? Better take a closer look. The rim of the drum is stained peach black. It's too dark to see anything inside. Should I take a closer look? Yeah! We're gonna regret it! I get up to the drum and peek inside. Ah, it's nothing there. It's fine. 
Things that is also pitch black. My guess is that they used to they use this to burn things. Ah, yes, the classic drum when you just throw all of your trash and you just burn it in there. Classic. I assume they were burning garbage, given the surroundings. Why did they do it here, though? Hmm? There's something at the bottom of the drum. There's not enough light for me to make out what it is with my naked eyes. Should I shine my flashlight on it? Was that necessary? What? What's wrong? Why did you start screaming out of the blue? In the drum. There's a hand with, with mushrooms. What did you say? Please check it, Mashita. I'm scared. Mashita, I'm scared. Mashita peers into the drum. There's nothing there, forehead. I can't see shit. Turn the light here. Okay. I turn my flashlight towards the inside of the drum while Mashita looks in. However, we only find a thick pile of dark grey ashes. There are several mushrooms as well, the same ones as on the nearby trees. Anyone can tell this drum hasn't been used for a long time. There's something in the ashes. Teeth? Yay! Tooth! A tooth! Another tooth! Another tooth for my ED tooth collection. Was it all just a spiritual phenomenon? Yes. Whose hand was it then? Oh, you know, someone who died. A ghost, hmm. even. It could be a ghost. It's, it's literally just a ghost. Even when I point my flashlight towards the forest, all I can see ahead is Agnes. I feel something terrifying might pop out at any moment. Still, I can't help but stare into the void. And then the void stares back at me. Something seems to be moving at the back. It's the void! It's finally gonna stare back! We both stare into the darkness. Darkness, are you gonna stare back? Darkness. Okay. Just screaming. Was that an animal sound? Sounded human to me, though. What was that voice? We better not stay here any longer. Well, we did just check everything we had to check in this area, I think, so, um... No, not to the infirmary. Let's go back to the path. Okay, so it said... Let's go back to the, uh... Uh, where is it? Scado... Wait, where's the note? Oh, there it is. I, I can't read it. Two bits for the monkey, three for the tiger, and one for the snake, so... Monkey, tiger, and snake. Uh, this is... Yush. Dog, okay, so it's... Oh, God fucking damn it! Sorry, my... Oh, no, my keyboard is... Prince OBS didn't... <laughs> First of all, he has acted like I didn't update my drivers. I know my keyboard is being weird. It's like Yush. today is a bad day. I'm gonna have to check this when the stream is done. Uh, monkey, okay. Name the sign of the Chinese zodiac, the monkey. You must clap. Two times. You may clap of the monkey. Twice. Little. Uh, and then tiger. Uh, this is sheep. So this should be horse, and this should be tiger. No, this is serpent. So it's the next one. This tiger. Oh, god damn it! Oh my god! It just, it just, it just keeps me out of the game. <laughs> the worst day ever, I guess. Uh, dragon. Okay, not the dragon. Uh, tiger is before Ooh. dragon, right? No, that's... Pra okay, so it has to be... This one? Was it the dragon? No, that's cow. So it has to be this one, right? Mm -hmm. Right? There you go, there it is. And the tiger is... Oh, oh god damn it! I do this to myself too. Uh, three times for the uh, for the tiger, and then 
what was the last one? Serpent? Or... Yeah, one beat for the snake. And that we know what it is because we have the path. Cool. Because I drive it so close, remind me when I used to play RPG games and my XP laptop cr uh, crashed because I didn't install the right configuration. I don't even know what the issue was because like I literally updated my drivers like two days ago and then OBS was like, hey, your drivers are not updated and I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Literally, what the fuck are you talking about? Literally. Okay, two clubs for the monkey, three clubs for the tiger, and one club for the snake. Alright. So there's a recent rain vibes. God, I need to buy the remake of that. There was a remake of Forest of the Recent Rain that looks absolutely gorgeous. And and I've been meaning to buy it. I don't know if it's on sale though. Excuse me, I'm drinking my coffee, so if I turn into an egg. It's because of that. That must have changed something. Let's see what it was. Well, hopefully the giant stone that didn't let us, you know, continue the path. Yeah, I know they remade it. They, they, they made a remake. It's it's pretty as Like, it's, it's pretty as shit. Um, mm -hmm. Is it here? Huge stone blocking the path. A thick shrine rope is wrapped around the stone. It looks like a serpent. I wonder what that means. Should I investigate it more closely? Yes. Touch it again. I grab the rope and try shaking it hard. I yes, shake the rope. I again? Severe chills be besieged my entire body once again. Oh boy. I knew it. This isn't just an ordinary store. An ordinary stone. I better stop. Dang it! Oh. That was a stone. Something rolls down the gap from the gap between the rope and the stone. Is it because I shook it? Okay, so I had to do that for my teeth. For my teeth collection. But still. Okay, fine, stone. I won't disturb you anymore. God. I did the thing, so, um... Hey, weird mushroom thing that was in the path. Uh, are you gonna let me continue uh, walking now? That I did the thing? <laughs> Can I bypass you now? Can I bypass you now? Yay! I can! Thank you. The mushroom man lets out a, sh let's a sh shout of joy before vanishing. Yay! Two bits for the monkey, three bits for the tiger, and one bit for the snake. Maybe the board's message helps us exercise the impurity, aka that spirit. Well then. Hey! Hey, Ashiki. Hey, Ashiki. Hey, Ashiki. What? Bitch. Hey, you know. That monster was wearing a Konoha Academy uniform. You think it's Kakuta? Well, I was gonna think, but it could be another student. Nope, he had blonde hair and wasn't as big as Kakuta. Who the fuck was that bastard then? Mm, let me think. Probably the delinquent from the story we heard. But I actually mentioned some delinquents who disappeared in the forest. Maybe she's one of them. Kakuri's deep seated grudge is swirling all around this forest. One slip up, and that figure might be the last thing we ever see. It's fine. We're gonna be just fine. Mm -hmm. There's an old stone lantern. It's an animal carved atop the lantern. It looks like a boar to me. The 12th sign of the Chinese are the boar. Well, there's nothing to do with them, so. Oh, there's. Man, there's a lot more mushrooms now, huh? Mm -hmm. Umbrella shaped mushrooms are growing on the tree trunk. Seeing these many mushrooms would m would many many Okay, that's a that's a that's a that's an error. Seeing these many mushrooms will make anyone feel queasy, even if they don't have trypophobia. Okay. Time to enter the shrine then. I hope something terrible happens. That's usually what happens, really. Oh, there's nothing here, huh? Find yourself in an open space after pa passing the gate. It should be the grounds of the shrine. However, there are no remains of any buildings to be seen. 
Are they completely decayed? That seems unlikely, considering... It, it would make more sense if someone just destroyed it. Excuse me, it's a coffee. Okay, coffee finished. Uh, let's see. Lantern, the other lantern, something far away. Wither is not letting me check, like, right there, the, you know, all, all around there. I would assume. Google. No stone lantern with mushrooms scattered are here and there. At that moment, I spot something glinting out of the lantern. Is there another tooth? We'll put. And uh, there? There? You're gonna put the tooth there? Let's have closer and find a small object on it. Oh, good catch. You can make a good detective, Yashiki. The spirit detective, Irad. God fucking damn it, why would you put the tooth there? That's a bad place. It could, it could yes. fall to the ground. Yes. Oh, yay, we leveled up. The spirit has increased by three. Yashiki and the other spirits have been restored. Good, because I got kind of fucked up. And let's see here. An old lantern, the only trace left of the shrine. And... Mm -hmm. Thick bushes and shrubs grow this area. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Are you gonna keep doing this? Yes. Do you see that red thing behind those bushes? Red thing? I strained my eyes staring at the bushes, but it's too dark for me to see anything even though I have a fucking flash. Yeah, she could just use the flashlight. You can't see it. <laughs> you need new glasses. Come here. Machita walks towards the bushes as I follow him from behind. With my bright flashlight in hand, we cross a spacious open area. If Kukuri was actually in here, we'd be perfect targets. Two seconds later, Kukuri just walks in like, Hi! I'm here! You're perfect targets! Just thinking about that sends chills on my spine. Look, there it is. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's freaky. Like, like that's, um, yeah, that's freaky. That's freaky in a very specific kind of way. Like, like, that's a specific kind of freaky, you know what I mean? Like, that's, um, that, that's, that, that's a kind of freakiness, okay? It's a red figure laying in the inner area. Hang on a second. These are clumps of red plants that are in the shape of a human. Still, this doesn't explain anything about the shrine. We better take a closer look. The mushrooms growing here are thin red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside a petri dish. But I don't get it. Why are they clustered in such a strange shape? Um. Is there anything that I should be using? I don't think so. Unless I have to use a petri dish. Um. Actually, maybe I should. Cuckoo. Okay. Let's do that again and use a petri dish. I'm assuming that's what I need. Okay, item. I think the creepy petri dish. How would I use this though? I'm gonna come up with an idea. God damn it! Mm. Has anything changed here then? No, this is the same. This is the same. They have to expect it more than hmm. once, though. I'll, I'll do that just in case. Yeah, mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's the same as before. Hmm. 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 I wonder if I need to bring Hero for this. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, 
Watch the entire place again. Anything here? No. Same coming about to phobia. Just actually the entire area one time before leaving to the hero. The lanterns, the serpent path we went to. Looking around here. No could be anything. Okay. Let's return to the infirmary and get here or she might have an idea what to do. Hey, you can I bite, you can I Oh, it says can I bite you? Aww. I no you can't by the way. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi, yes, you I miss you. Yes, I want that word, thank you. And we're at what six three. Oh, man, that's that's a lot. I didn't even notice. Eat it, So you. Yeah, the middle. Let's see. Talk to people in the infirmary. Nobody knows what may come, and that's especially true when we're walking around the forest at night. You can't know what lies ahead, so don't forget to restore your spirit. Yeah, that's why I came to heal. The fox forest. You know, stop doing that. Those hashtag sex noises, will you? I imagine that was making sex noises. I love how every time you you get close to an interactor, it's just like. He's getting his little um flash like up. It's just like beep beep. Okay, hero, do you, you have any idea what to do with this bullshit? Because you're the smart one. The Mashita is kind of an idiot. I love him, but he's dumb. Okay. Ah. Uh. No, she doesn't have anything to say. That's weird. Did I not check anything? Should I go back to the bats? To see if I can find anything? Hmm. Any different commentary with you around? No, okay. Maybe one of the bats then. Or yes. is there any other path that I haven't checked then? Uh, oh, there is. Okay, that was my error. <laughs> the items in the seems to be an animal proxy for into the woods. Okay. Same as before. Thank the lord it was just that. Oh, so gonna be, it was gonna be here stuck for like 3 million years. We follow the animal tracks surrounded by overgrown flora once again. I wonder what's waiting for me in this deep dark forest. That... Uh... It's an open area in front of us. Something's there. What? Several logs have been arranged in this meadow. They kind of resemble a fence. An inordinate number of mushrooms are growing around the logs. Maybe someone used these logs to cultivate mushrooms. Be careful, Yashiki. These mushrooms might have something to do with cookery. Huh. Mm hmm. A stone with mushrooms growing on it. What's that? Something's stuck on the other side of the stump. Tooth. 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 I pick a few steps closer and find a metal grip protruding from the ground. That is not a tooth. I tried to pull it out. It was actually a shovel. Okay. What's it doing here? I don't like that. The voice just now. It sounded like a male's voice. He was not showing any reaction. Looks like I'm the only one who heard it. Yashiki is having a bad time. This shovel might have some sordid tail attached to it. 
Despite the creepiness, this shovel might come in handy. I start to take it despite my pounding heads for the stations. Obtain a small shovel. Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. this is, that kind of looks like a corpse. On the ground, I see a mass of uh, a mass with a rather odd shape, almost like corpse shape. What is that? I better examine it. An ominous mass surrounded by moss. It doesn't resemble a human. So I should dig it out to find out what it is. Um, we'll never know unless we check. Yes. I reach out to the mass, poking it. It's harder than I thought. I was not doing this with my hands. I need something with a sharp edge. Dude, we just got a shovel. I pick up the shovel and stick it into the mass. A part of the mass crumbles away. I carefully pick it up and look it over. I believe this is a kind of mushroom. Its surface is as hard as a tree bark. So this mass is a giant mushroom with moss growing on its surface. There's something buried in the place I dug out. Another one? Another one. Okay, another year too. We're almost finished with those yes. this chapter. Blocks are assembled like a fence. I can't see what's on the other side of the fence. Let's move in closer and get a better look. Oh no. Well then... We find a corpse wearing a Konohara Academy uniform on the ground. Unsettling with white, whitish mushrooms are growing from the body. This is another victim of Kukuri's curse. What should we do? Stay back, I'll inspect the corpse. I consciously approach the dead body. Where should I start? Uh, the pants pockets, just to check if it has an ID. I reach inside the corpse pants pockets. Inside I find a smartphone. It's pretty much stuck and has no distinctive customizations, making it hard for us to guess who owned it. Maybe I can learn something from the phone itself. I press the buttons to no avail. It's been broken. The pockets. I reach inside the, bla the corpse's blazer pockets. I found a piece of paper inside the pocket. It seems to have been torn from something. I position the beam of my fla the beam of my flashlight so I can examine the paper's content. Fox lacata, a type of fungus that only lives in the fox forest. Its spore carp doesn't have a cap or stalk. Takes the shape of a reed. A poisonous mushroom. It contains ten times the amount of psilocybin, hallucinogenic as the infamous psilocybin argent types. As of this writing, there are currently no laws regulating possession or cultivation of this fungus. However, considering the negative impact it will have on individuals, especially minors, official regulation and study are needed. Descriptions of a plant are written on it. This must be the missing page from the guide in the storage room. Scarlet strip shaped mushrooms. It should be referring to these plants. Yeah, those. And. Hallucinogenics? Damn! These red mushrooms are called Fox Lakata. According to the information, they seem to be mushrooms with strong hallucinogenic effects. Well then. There's another piece of paper inside the pocket. Unlike the first, this one is written in rough, hairy penmanship. The author of this note was definitely pissed off. Fox Lakata and the Merlin at Lake S. The minor offender in the case seemed to have ingested Fox Lakata, and the one who sold the mushroom to them was Kay. I've seen shifty looking youngsters roaming around the fox forest. Looks like they intended to harvest Fox Lakata. There were also students from our school, including Kay. I didn't disclose this information to the public out of fear that it would damage the school's reputation. That was a great mistake. I take responsibility for everything. The mother of a mother and a child at Lake S. Anything that I've never heard of before. Oh, let's check the body. My eyes are fixed on the corpse. I can feel gastric juices well up into my throat. Yashiki, you don't eat. 
It's, you're gonna, you, you're vile. This is the worst. The more I stare at it, the more repulsive it looks. This used to be a human being, and now it looks like this. Don't look away. I'm gonna mild castigation to myself and continue observing the body. All the sprouting mushrooms have turned up the uniform. It isn't that dirty. He must have died recently. Well, that's only one person that we that we know of, so... A green tie, that indicates he's a second year. Mushrooms are growing all over his large body. Yeah, it's, it's cuckoo to come on. That's all there is to inspect. Did you discover anything, Yashiki? Yeah, quite a bit. I described the corpse's features and show Hiro the, item, the items I found. Um, I'm afraid that corpse is him. Hmm. Kuta. Yeah, I think so too. A second year student with a large bill. Has a torn page of a scientific journal with him. It's obviously Kakuda. Kakuda had been cursed by Kukuri. The curse didn't end just because he ran away. He probably lost his stamina here. Maybe we can learn why Kakuda came to this forest if we inspect his belongings. We better keep them, Yashiki. Agreed. Think of Kuda's cell phone and Fox Lakata document. Well, that was freaky. Take for a silent prayer for his soul and leave the place. I realized something on our way back. Unlike the other victims, Kakuda's corpse didn't disappear. I wonder why. The only possible reason I can come up with is that maybe when he passed, he wasn't human any longer. Kakuda had basically become mushrooms. Even his parents wouldn't recognize him in that state. I wonder what's a better death, not even leaving behind a corpse or being completely stripped of all your distinguishing human features. I mean, that would be, sounds pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, okay, this is the last thing in this area. Mushrooms are growing on a lump of moss. There is nothing particularly interesting here. Not even red mushrooms that resemble for the Oh. Let's go back to that other corpse then. The one that was entirely made of folks Lakata. For some good of reason. Yeah, stop doing those hashtag sex noises. Yoshi. Those of red plants have formed a human shell. The mushrooms growing here are thin red filaments. They look similar to the red mushrooms inside the petri dish. This has got a bee fox lacada. I don't get it. But have they clustered in such a strange shape? Okay, nothing else really. Look, we just we just saw the other corpse. It's like there there ha that has to be another body. God fucking damn it, Yashi. Mm, is there any other path that we haven't checked before? You are still doing those noises. Let's see. It's a dog. There's no comment on the dog. The rooster we saw. There's no comment on the monkey. No comment on the sheep. Uh-huh. Of course. There's nothing here. The serpent we saw. Dragon, there's nothing there. Yoshi. Rabbit, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Uh huh, tiger, nothing. Mm -hmm. Cow, nothing. Hmm. And. Nothing for the mouse either. Then it's just the normal path again. There doesn't seem to be anything here. Hmm. I wonder if I just didn't find something in the other path. I'll check them again. Yeah, stop doing those noises. Please. I'm I'm begging you right now. Okay, again with the snake thing. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing here. Otherwise, I guess I'd have to ask Ata about it. He should probably find something about the murder. Uh, nothing new here. No, I checked everything. You know what? I think I'll just do that. I think I'll just go check Ata. He's probably gonna tell me something about it. Hey guys! Hey Ata! Hey Ata! Hey Ata! Hello Yashiki! Hi! What do you want me to look up? Uh, really? Really? You don't give me that as an option? That's... You mean to tell me that I just found out that someone got killed in, in something completely unrelated to this and I can't investigate it by telling a to check... Okay. So weird. No, actually, should I check this a second time, just in case? Uh, uh -huh. No, nothing, okay. Ada was completely useless, so let's go back to the other path then. Okay, rooster. Uh, hmm. I can't hear the voice anymore, so nothing there. Hmm. The signboard. Yeah, that's the same as before. Uh, just no. Checks points cool. here. It all drum doesn't have anything. Okay. The board path. Uh, we check. We just check everything here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So we checked all of that. So we're not gonna check the corpse again, we just hmm. oh, wait, that was slightly different. I really see mushrooms are growing on the tree trunk. I didn't really look to find any mushrooms for some for Sakata to no avail. Mm -hmm. And also landing with mushrooms scattered here and there. Cuckoo. Uh huh? What am I supposed to be checking mm -hmm. there? I pass away wrong with mashed. Okay. Also, red does a form of human shape. Uh huh. Maybe the shovel? Can I use the shovel? Let's take the small shovel from my bag. My gut's telling me something's buried here. Okay, that was, that was what I had to do. That's enough motivation to start thrusting the shovel into the earth. I mean, there's definitely a corpse around here. That's for sure. My shovel hits something hard. Being careful not to break whatever it is, I try and excavate the dirt around it. Corpse. 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 Is it the corpse? Is it the corpse? Before long, the object becomes visible. Yeah, corpse. Well, skeleton. They're all human bones. The bones are clad with tattered clothes. That has worked its way through the fiber now, but I believe this used to be white. Who the hell is this poor sword? I don't know, but... 
The white clothes make me think that it could be Mr. Kukuri from the rumors. I have a said Kukuri is the spirit of a priest. The disguise here is that priest. We may find out once we get a better look at the skeleton. I crouch next to the corpse and inspect it. From the bone structure, it appears these bones belong to a man. However, they don't really have any special identifying features that would help us, like a missing finger or something. At this time of night, we'd be hard pressed to cross check his teeth against dental records, too. It can matter worse, other than the shreds of formerly white clothing, there are no belongings to be found. The fact that his body is buried here might indicate that he was murdered. If so, then his belongings might have been stolen at the time. Who are you? Words full of anxiety and confusion tumble from my mouth. Deep inside the old school, the dead fox god that looks alive inside the stomach. <laughs> what was that? A man's voice suddenly echoes through my mind as if he's trying to answer my question. I believe these are the murmurs of his deep resentment. If you listen too carefully, you might get overwhelmed by the regrets of the deceased. We can't stay here any longer. It's dangerous. Let's go, Mashita. I don't think we'll get any useful information here. Nothing really? Yet. So we boyfriend. Uh suddenly the sound of a gunshot rings out and reverberates through the shrine grounds. Oh hi. That's uh Well then, hi. It's got something resembling a hunting rifle in his hands. Is that Mr. Kukuri? Please don't kill me, I'm not a Korean. Mr. Kukuri disappeared. Another gunshot rings out, and the bullet hits the ground near our feet, spraying us with dirt. This is bad. That thing's of real damage and he's trying to shoot us with it. Well then... Hey, Yashiki, don't go out there like that. You're wide open. The same that Machita hides behind a nearby tree. I do the same and hunker down behind a different tree. The bullet hits somewhere completely off target. The bullet hits a spot near the lantern. Huh, this guy is obviously an amateur. I think he's using a hunting rifle. You can see the grouping of his shots is very loose. Peter Gonzalo and hasn't been clean, but he's just a poor marksman who keeps missing the target. I think as long as we keep a good distance from him, the bullets won't hear us. Her we shouldn't be careless. He only needs one lucky shot to kill us. What should we do then? I can't see him anywhere. I'll just sit here and wait for him. We'll be dead of meat once he gets close enough. Everything is certainly trending very badly for us. Even if we try to make a mad dash for it, the road ahead is straight and narrow. Even a bad shooter with a bad gun is going to be able to hit their target eventually in this kind of situation. What should we do then? Oh no, we're going to die. This is terrible. We really can't make a move so long as we don't know where Curry is. Hold on, we can't see him right now. I feel like I remember something, but I'm not too sure. You come and think, there must be clues somewhere. Okay. Creepy Petri dish. Some of the centipedes, some of the mushrooms. What will that? Wait, Machita, how, what can you have better chances at eating the mushrooms? Machita, do you want to, to explain that? Why do you have better chances at eating the mushrooms on the centipede which happens to be hallucinogenic? You're gonna have to explain that, sweetie. I run along and escape. That's not gonna work. Mm. 
Well, Machika has better chances, so... Get, get high, I guess. Let's see if that does anything. Machika try eating this. I put up a piece of the mushroom inside the dish and throw it to Machika, who is hiding behind a tree. So you really want me to eat this? Yeah, trust me. Browning Mashita pops a mushroom into their mouth and swallows it. <coughs> yeah, it's probably very disgusting. Mashita looks at me with a strange expression afterwards. What the hell was that for? Nothing's happening. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I should be the one eating it, not Mashita. <coughs> well, that was my mistake. Okay, let's eat the mushroom ourselves, I guess. Let's try to get high. Over the preparation, decide to eat some of the mushrooms that grow on the sandy beat. I guess my better judgment. I had one of the mushrooms sticking out of the insect's body and tear it off with force. Then, with steely determination, I swallow it down. I feel my body getting warm like I just drank a mug of hot water. My heart is beating so fast, my vision starts to blur. This is probably the effects of Pops Legata. Hey, hey you alright, Yasuki? Yeah, I think so. Wait, why didn't you feel like shit? I'm used to drugs, idiot. Oh. Oh, there it is. Hi. As my heartbeat returns to normal, I'll slowly stabilize. My vision stops going blurry, and I'm no longer in a daze. Then, a mysterious figure appears before my eyes. There, I can see the curry. So this is the right choice. The curry hasn't moved an inch. But it's just sure he hasn't come any closer. Wait, what? You can see the curry? Yeah, thanks to the red demon. It creeps some devil to see the invisible of the curry. Female doll mentioned it before. I mean, I thought that Machita would have better luck with that, but okay. Now he does fully dance, Curry aims his gun in our direction. Stop doing that! The bullet hits the tree we're hiding behind. Uh, his accuracy in propping down now. All things for such, and we can't escape right now. We need to find out some way to fight back. As much as I can see the curry, the only one who can fight him is me. There's not much I can do to fight back, but I better give him my own. The talisman, the side of Mantra and the with talisman. That's very low chances with the gun. Mash, why do you give me a gun? Yes. I doubt it worked, but I'll give it a shot. I come out of hiding and I hold Abe's talisman to work to Kukuri. I need to recite a chant next. This is probably gonna get me killed. I'm not too sure about this one, but I guess I'll try Kujikiri, the Nine Cuts chant. Power, energy, harmony, healing, combination, empathy, dimension, creation, enlightenment. Nope. Yeah, that's gonna get me killed. Yep, yep. As I expected, it did not work. I'm attacking instead. Well. Fine, I'll shoot him with my gun. This is no good. It's like 64%. It's being really realistic. When the suspicious paper gun, take out the gun inside. Thanks, smashing down. This is a terrible idea. You're gonna use that, we actually keep remember, deep breaths, aim steady, take the shot. Sorry, but I have to leave it to you. I can't see the master. I'll give it a try. I've got no idea if he's even going to work against the curry. Like, he's a ghost. Honestly, I'm just hoping my attack will surprise him enough that he flees. Not expecting much, I put my head out of cover and ready the gun. Exactly, that's what I expected. Panicking, I accidentally dropped the gun into the ground. Is my 
Uh, yeah, okay, again. Uh, that wasn't even XCOM percentages, that was just bad percentages. Now, if I fail this one, that's XCOM percentages. Yeah, that's XCOM percentages. Fuck up, babe! Good times! Chicky, you're useless. Yes. Now it fails at 99%. And I, and I just lose my mind. You literally explode percentages. Okay, thank you. Taking him at Kukuri, I pull the trigger immediately. Kukuri also shoots his gun at the same time, and his shot graces my leg. Ooh, ow! You actually be dying. This is awful. My bullet doesn't hit Kukuri. I'm just taking my time and aim before firing my shot. But that only leave me defenseless for a long time. Is there a better way to do this? Wait, then how do I do this? I'm the only person who can see him. Yes. The two of us? I guess that would work. Oh, yeah, okay. After all my complete novice, I don't have any confidence in my ability to shoot a gun, and as we see, as we've seen, it failed. Mashita, I needed something to distract Kukuri for a couple of seconds. Uh, I figured you were gonna ask something like that. I'll do something about it. Eliminating Mashita's tactics, I poke my head out and ready my gun. Thank you for supporting me, boyfriend. Mashita leaves his cover and shoots into the open space. The great chance to our Mashita. Great job, Mashita, I love you. I take aim at Kukuri, who has now stopped moving, breathe deeply, and calmly pulled the trigger. Kukuri lets out an eerie howl. You let him, Yajiki? I think I hit him. Although, I guess it's more like my bullet just passed through his body. Well, he's a spirit after all. If you could defeat them with guns, no one would call me to investigate. They just get the military. kind of upset. The boy screams in anger and fires his gun. He then begins to approach us slowly. Uh, this is bad. Yeah, he's coming closer. Uh, so we just piece him off. When the villain is the right choice. He is breathing hard. He seems angry. The closer he gets to us, the more in danger we are. It also makes it easier to shoot him now, but will that really help? Okay, hey, what are we gonna do? We're running out of time and also HP. Uh, I know that already. If we knew how to do the pretty shots, we might be able to find another in escape. Yeah, she keep on dying. Our bullets don't work against Kukuri, but we need to wear an opening to survive. Kukuri's mask, just look at his Kukuri's rifle. Well, the rifle is the only thing that is technically real, I would assume. Get the rifle out of his hand. Sorry, but can you be my Diko once more in Machida? That's fine. Trusting in Machida, I pick my head out of cover and ready my gun. Next gun percentage. I love you again, thank you for your help. Today I want to hurry, who has now stopped waiting, break the beat and can we pull the trailer. The girl lets out an eerie howl. Nah, he's so definitely hit. I saw it for a split second, you should, your shot hit his rifle. Kukuri sounds frustrated or angry. Something may have happened to his rifle. Your attack jammed his rifle. Yeah, probably. It's now or never. Three times shoulders. Let's go, Mashita. I know, don't you tell me. 
Once you reach the path, we beat feed and don't slow down. Looks like this is the right choice, and we didn't die. Even though Yashiki is absolutely fucked up. Oopsie. <laughs> Machita and I race out of there as fast as we can. We're running straight for the exit. Hashtag success. There's no guarantee that Mr. Kakuri will let us go, even if we escape the forest. Like Slit Mad of Kashima, he can probably follow them now that he said he sights on us. We'll have to be careful everywhere we go everywhere going forward. Even so, our only choice right now is to turn for our is to run for our lives. Even if hell is gonna be hot on our heels wherever we go. Our only goal is survival, and I'm sure that Mashita feels the same. It's the exit Yashiki. Is he still chasing us? He's not. Looks like we've survived the hunt for now. For oh, fuck's sake, we barely escaped that bastard. We better stay out of this goddamn forest for now, unless you feel like being target practice. Mashita looks exhausted, and I'm sure, and I'm sure I do as well. Let's take this opportunity to head to the infirmary and sort out everything we've just learned. Agreed. Infirmary time. Guys, you won't believe what happened. We almost died. Like, four times. A sigh of relief escapes my lips the moment we step into the infirmary. I'm lucky that I'm seeing these walls again. And that's not an exaggeration in the slightest. I have to tell Yasuoka and the others what happened in the forest. Welcome back. Glad to see you're both safe. Yasuka and Hiro are the only people inside the infirmary. Oh no. Where's Maruhashi? Oh, she went to the restroom. Alone? He's aware of the dangers that Shrine poses, poses now. And she's not headed into the forest. She should be fine. Kukuri is not the only threat here, though. The party is roaming around this school as well. Although, the partner only kills their target after issuing a notice, so Maruhashi should be fine. I don't think she's not here then. I'll give you a quick summary of what happened before she returns. There, I think, there are things I don't want her to hear. I feel let me know what happened in the forest. I see, so Kukuda is... It's painful to know that a young life hasn't been lost like that. But does that mean Kakura was hooligan? More or less. Kakura stole a document about Fox Lakara, so he must have known something about it, though I find it hard to imagine that he was acting on his own. Fox Lakara is a strong hallucinogenic, so it wouldn't surprise me if other people were doing something with it. A strong hallucinogenic, huh? I'd like to study it at the Institute. It may be a new kind of alkaloid. Very intriguing. Can you give me some some of those first like character research once we wrap up this investigation? Uh, not the crap, hero. This thing needs to be in the hands of the government. I'm gonna submit this shit to my friend at the DEA, and I'm not having it. And I'm not having it any other way. Got it? Is you're not fun. Back. Oh, you're here already. Hey, you better feel me in too. Don't leave me out of everything. Fine. Leaving out the bits about Kakuta's death, I tell her what happened in the forest. I can go up a story and say that I found the paper and the phone lying on the ground. Ah, so Kakuta was in the forest. Why was he there, though? No, I think he got a call. Maybe his phone could tell us something. Unfortunately, it's broken. I tried pressing the bottom, but... Let me take a look. Marahashi starts touching the phone screen like it's her own phone. It's not broken. Broken. The battery's just dead. Anyone with a phone should be able to realize this. Jeez, how about we tech stuff are you, Grandpa? Uh, sorry, you got me there. I have a charger that will work with, his, with this phone at home. Maybe we should try and charge it, and then see if we can get something out of it. My home's not far from here. 
This phone is going to be pretty useless to us without the battery. Let's take her up on her offer. I link Akuda's phone to Maruhashi. Alright, I'll be right back. Don't get killed. Maruhashi quickly exits the, the infirmary. What should we do now? Should we wait until that kid calls us? Ah, you object to that course of action. We should resume the investigation. It's for your sake as well, Yashiki. Huh? What do you mean by that, Yasuka? I can tell you're being targeted by a spirit. Um... Yeah? That's... Yasuka, that's literally what has been happening for the last... Eight, twelve, like sixteen hours of gameplay. I excuse me. Sooner or later, the spirit would find its way to you. If that happens while you're unprepared, you meet the same fate as Kakuta. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake! Why is everything so? As a renowned fortune teller and, tell and spiritualist, Yasuka's words carry a lot of weight. I thought maybe the clock had stopped with Kakuta's death, and we'd have a little more time before there was another target. But it turns out the clock is still ticking, and it's counting down for me. B but what should we do now? We still don't know what, who exactly Kukuri is, right? That's something we can research. I have an idea. Remember the case from Kakura's document? Let's look into that murder of a mother and child at Lake S. That's been stuck in my head. Thank you, somebody else noticed that. Thank you, Mashita, you're, you're my favorite. How are we going to investigate that? I uh, have Nakamatsu to look it up on the internet for us. He should at least be able to pull up a general summary from somewhere. And by that, I mean you will call him up. Wait, why do I have to do it? You don't know, have to use a phone, just call him yourself! Nah, I don't really like talking to him. We're not really on the same wavelength. And we are? Yeah. <laughs> so that's your issue? I guess you can expect a nice attack when a hard boy likes detective to get along. Looks like I'm going to have to be the one to call Ata. God fucking damn it. Well, I did it before, I can do it again. Ata! Hello, Yashiki. What do you want me to look up? Can you look for any information you can find about a, mud about a murder of a mother and child at Lake S? It might be connected to an investigation. Jeez, a mother and child being murder. That sounds awful. I'll try searching. The fact that the music stopped was uh, very dramatic there. Found something. Ten years ago, a mother and child were beaten to death by a group of delinquents. I'll show the details now. It's pretty long, so you should probably start taking notes. Ah, yes. The note-taking sound. Oh, we bought a pen to write down everything Ata says about the mother. Mother, mother of a mother and child at Lake S. Ten years ago, at Lake S in S City, a family who went camping was attacked by a group of young men. Mother Isumi Kiyohara, 37, and her daughter Kosui Kiyohara, 16, were beaten to death. The father, Masaki Kiyohara, 40, was gravely injured but survived. He was hospitalized for three months. Masaki Kiyohara was a teacher at a school in H City, not far from S City. He continued to work there after the incident but later disappeared. Is it this school? He's a teacher in this school, isn't he? The crime was committed by eight juveniles, all between the ages of 16 and 19. At the time of the crime, they were under the influence of mind-altering substances. Due to their ages, names of the perpetrators were not disclosed. The narcotic they were taking at the time was believed to be some new type of psychedelic mushroom. Of the eight juveniles who were arrested, Kay, who was allegedly the drug dealer, was released due to insufficient ev evidence. Okay, so... Kakuda definitely was involved in this and he helped kill that mother and child and I'm 100% sure that this, that the uh, father who survived was a teacher at this school. Obtain S. Lake murder document. That's horrible. Those violent punks are scary than spirit. Ata might have had a point there. Spirits who curse humans are pretty frightening, but humans are responsible for creating spirits in the first place. The malicious actions of people cause grudges, and grudges create spirits. It's a chain of hatred, one that begins with humans. 
By the way, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, Yashiki. Hey, yeah? That's what she's doing. Oh, he's fine. I need to get going soon. Oh, you can leave the mansion if you want. Thanks for your help today, Ita. No problem at all. Talk to you soon, Yashiki. I. You care? Tell Susui say hi. How did it go, Yashiki? Ita had a lot to share. I shared the details of the murder with the other three. I see, no wonder he was sticking in my head. Did you work on that case, Mashita? Come on, man, use your brain just a little bit. That case is 10 years old, I wasn't on the force yet. But now I recall my mentor was the one who told me about it. Nakamatsu pretty much covered the whole thing though, so I don't have any additional info to add. Do you think the mushrooms from the case are folks like Ada? This case is just full of mushrooms, huh? Can I argue with that? The first involving mushrooms growing from your body could have been turned into mushrooms. The folks that cut on the dead centipede in the dirt petri dish. And now we've learned about the tragedy caused by folks that cut it 10 years ago. Everything's connected to mushrooms. Boy K, the one who wasn't prosecuted. Could it have been. Akuda? God damn it, I just told you that case is 10 years old. There's no way Kakura was involved back then. Well, it's pretty unlikely for him to have been directly involved, but he knew about Fox Akara. He reacted to the Petri dish and he even hid the documents. Everything would tie itself up nicely if he turned out to be the mushroom to be a mushroom dealer. I imagine we don't have enough information yet, however. Well, yeah, no, he's too young, so if he's too young, then he at least knew that... Okay, so he wasn't involved in that murder, but he was probably involved with the dealer, and that's more than enough, I assume. The key to discovering Mr. Kukuri's identity is likely the link between the past and the present, and, and the past and present cases. Or so I believe. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of this deduction session. What we need now is some solid evidence. Let's continue the investigation, Yashiki. We don't know where to start, though. We probably won't find anything in the forest or the shrine in the corridor. Mm. I have a place in mind. For real? I got some information in the forest that leads us to our next spot. Well, there was a voice for the, from the corpse. Right, the voice I heard when I when expecting the bones. Yeah, the old school, uh, the dead fox god. That's the statue that is there. That voice told me to investigate somewhere. Maybe heading to the location they mentioned will help us identify that corpse. And if we can learn about the person who became Mr. Bukuri, we can start devising a plan of attack. Which sounds great, except we're running low on time. Should we really just trust something that I hear from a mysterious voice when so much is at stake? Yes! That's what we do every single time, Yashiki, and it worked well the entire time, so don't worry. Having trouble making a decision? When you're running out of time and you need to make a tough choice, just trust your instinct and hope for the best. You know what's most important when dealing with spirits? Courage and conviction. Thanks for the reminder. I'll go with my gut and act on the information the voice gave me. Let's search for the dead box god that looks alive in the depths of the old school. But we're gonna do that next time. Because uh, we're at time. Man, find a stage already. That was a relatively fast chapter. Okay, let me just change this. That is gonna be a little annoying. Anyway. That was a lot of progress. Oh, man, and a lot of technical issues. It's one of those days. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. Tomorrow we're continuing uh, Dead Mark 2. Probably finishing this chapter, I assume. And this is chapter 5. Then this chapter 6. And I know that the game doesn't get you, doesn't let you get the good ending, like the the, the gold. Excuse me, the golden ending. 
until after you do one run when you finish the regular ending but it also lets you select chapters so chances are we're gonna go through the normal ending and then we're gonna go back and start chapter 6 again to get the other endings there's like a weird ending that you can get to um, in between the good and the golden one uh, and then uh, after that is the chapter 7 which is a sp uh, like a bonus chapter but that is after chapter 6 uh, but anyway again thank you for being here have a good rest of your day have a good start to the weekend and I'll be seeing you tomorrow for more Dead Mark 2 be careful of mushrooms be careful of mushrooms they're terrible bye everyone